Got the 40 of Taylor Carver right there in the third spot. Oh, and here comes Carver to the end, Shino Brown. Down the max stretch, gonna have a battle as Welshmeyer's up to the wall on the max stretch, able to keep it under power, but here we come, a battle for second as Carver and Brown gonna battle to the front stretch. Downtown Timmy Brown working that outside lane there on the outside of Carver. As down the back stretch they go side by side there. They go in the turns three and four. Down the front stretch they go. Tony Agwin still out front. Agwin opening up a nice little race lead with a battle for second ensuing behind him between Brown and Carver. Carver getting a little bit of a momentum here on the inside into turns three. Brown on the high side trying to get some momentum. Going to try to cross over coming and bobble it. New second place is going to Carver. Front stretch right now holding up pretty nicely right now. We got trouble though as the Joker welding caution flag and fly is coming out. The Joker welding caution flag coming out. First time tonight for the Tony Ripper Memorial. So far, that front stretch is keeping up pretty, pretty good. It might take a couple of races, especially after you dig dirt up, then place it back. It might take some time to get it packed in, but so far there's some drivers, especially that 31, Tony Aglin that's been using that high side, but Tony Aglin in a 31, right there, your leader, the 40 of Taylor Carver in second. So 40, we'll have the choice between the bottom or the top. This is called a Delaware double file restart, where the second place car will have the choice between the bottom or the top. He will choose the bottom lane. The 11 of Derek Brown will be on the outside. Derek Brown, the son of Tim Brown, the 1B. As lights are off, get ready to go back racing this time. Green flag is back in the air. Agler gonna lead him down into one and two. Though Carver trying to make a dive bomb down to the bottom of the racetrack, does not stick. Derek Brown there on the high side, trying to get a little bit of momentum up there in a little bit of moisture up there. Aglin still holding on to your race lead. Down the front stretch, gonna lead another one. Tony Aglin out front, Carver right there. Look at the run on the bottom side there. Had a good run there in one and two. Down the back stretch they go. Can Aglin hold on to the lead? He slides up the track. Here comes Carver once again, liking that inside lane. It's still Tony Aglin out front. There is a lot of speed right now coming out of the time of turn number four. Aglin's all over it. Carver still though to the back bumper of the 31. Now the back shoot with Derek Brown right there, hoping somebody slides up like right now. Here he comes to the inside, one to go. White flag is out one more time around. We got three car battle for the lead. That Carver on the inside of Aglin down. The back stretch they go in the turns three and four. It's usually the bottom group, but tonight it's the high group down the front stretch. They go side by side. Tony Allen gets the win. Taylor Carver coming home second. Derek Brown coming home third. Well, Kenton, thanks to Rogers Dirt Works LLC, that top groove is the place to be right now. I'm telling you that the speed they get coming off the top of turn number four is amazing. Aglin took was the first car to really jump up there and do that, and he stuck it, and boy, what a race we had already. All right, it's now time for the Norris Logging Power Eye Midwest Modifieds. First of four heat races. Top three cars will, we will go off passing points and the top 14 in passing points will make it to the feature tonight. On the pole for this one, out of Grove Springs, Missouri, it'll be the 14D of Derek Davis on his outside. It'll be the 77th J of Frank Woods Cabbage. Row number two on the inside, it'll be the 33 of Anthony Ferreira. On the outside, it'll be the 5C of Brian Cook. Row number three, it'll be Derek Collins, Jacob Cater. Row number four, it'll be Derek Cook, Colt Cheevers. 
in row number five. It'll be the 38 of Ian Morrison. Lights are off, green flag is in the air. Down the front stretch, here comes the 14D of Derek to Madman Davis going into one and two. Frank West Cabbage there in the 77J, gonna do, try to get a little bit on the high side. Got Anthony Sliders Ferreira side by side there, the former Springfield Cardinal baseball pitcher. As Frank West Cabbage gonna go around the top of three and four and collect Cater and Cook as well. Brian Cook slid. Frank West Cabbage is up there in the top of three and four. So the Joker Welding caution flag coming out. Once again, Joker Welding, a local welding company here. As they have everything that you can think of from gas bottles, helmets, wires, everything. They have a portable welding. Appreciate Joker Welding. Give them a call there at 417-991-WELD. Visit them on Facebook as our night auction service push truck and tow truck is busy off of turn number two there. As we're once again added money to the Power Eye Norris Logging Midwest Mods, 750 to win tonight and more money down the line. Looks like Jacob Cater too here to the bottom of turn number four. We got a lot of our uh, top five in the national point standings in this heat race. The uh, 64 of Pete Richardson is your current point leader. He will be in a later heat race, but we've got the 33 of Anthony Ferreira right now, third in the point standings. And uh, interesting fact about Anthony is he not only is a race car driver, but he played, I believe, uh, for the Springfield Cardinals at Hammonds Field there in Springfield, Missouri. He got a play for the Springfield Cardinals. He got called up by the St. Louis Cardinals a couple times. Also played ball internationally in Mexico as well. Uh, uh, was one of the drivers I got to interview uh, for my show. But yeah, Anthony Ferreira, one, one of the drivers uh, weekly for the fans right there. So if you kids want to go and meet the 33, Anthony is a good guy. He also coaches baseball um, in his off time. As uh, I had a busy, busy day today. I had to help a uh, youth uh, baseball team earlier this morning. So got to spend some time at the baseball field. Then made my way out to the racetrack and couldn't ask for a better day, especially with uh, the rain that we've been receiving lately. It's good to have a weekend where we can enjoy uh, this great uh, weather that we have here, especially at the racetrack, as we got a packed house here tonight and it's exciting for the Tony Roper Memorial, exciting for the Cash Money Late Model Series to be on hand with us as they are working there off of churn. Number four there, get the 20 of Jacob Cater hooked up. We talked about it before the race has started, Kenton. It's a little bit of emotional uh, up here in the booth because we got the team back. <laughs> we do got the team back. It's a, it's a pretty big, small team. Well, big in my mind, but <laughs> show me dirt. Thomas has given us the thumbs up. It's been a, it's been a while since we've all been together, and it's it, it feels like we never left. I know we spent all last year together, and the four of us, uh, me and you and Ronnie and Thomas and Kit, uh, well, actually five of us, because Keith down there, the flag stand, we we were like the traveling. Uh, racing in the Ozarks team uh, for for on Fridays and, and Saturdays, but it's it's good to be back, have the team back together here for the Tony Roper Memorial, and welcome everybody that is watching on Show Me Dirt TV. This is a special event, so no heat race win, free pit passes as they. So. Uh, this is a special event as we do that with our weekly classes for our open for our modifieds. If you win a heat race, you get a free pit pass for our weekly class and weekly race in action. But this is a special event. The Tony Roper Memorial lights are off. Get ready to go back racing. All right, Derek Davis and Anthony Ferrer are gonna pace them in two, three, and four, looking for the green flag, and here we go. Down at a turn number four, here comes a madman, Derek Davis, Anthony Ferreira right there on his bumper. 
Going into one or two, Ferreira gonna get that bumper right under the skirt of Davis, and here they come down to Max Rich, Cook, and Cheevers battling out there for a second, and Colt 45, Cheevers is gonna get going into turn number three. Looking to get on the inside of Ferreira down the front stretch, Davis is gonna lead another one. Davis out front, your leader to 40, the 30, 45 of Colt Cheevers, excuse me, right there in third. Looking the gain on the Lears there, the 14 of Derek Davis in the 33 of Anthony Ferreira off of passing points tonight as it's still Derek Davis out front. Laps are ticking down now. Davis is going to bob a little bit. Here comes Colt on the high shot on the outside of Ferreira down the back stretch. A little bit of, oh, get into the wall a little bit. Tap that right rear to the wall. And Ferreira looking to the inside of Davis as Colt Cheevers is still trying to get that high side hustle and going easy three wheel down the front stretch. It's working these couple more times. It'll be hot later tonight. Well, we got Nathan Morrison in the house, the drone man on the track right now, making some laps around the mighty Lebanon Midway Speedway as he is out front with their leaders, the 14 of Davis. I'm not going to lie. I thought that was a bird who had a death wish for a minute. But Davis is holding off a charging Ferreira and Cheevers down the back chute. They go, but Morrison getting the inside of Brian Cook in the 5C as the battle for the lead right now is a really a three-car battle down the front stretch. Hey, I'm pretty impressed with that drone keeping up there with that three car battle there for the lead as that's going to be some great footage later on tonight. Nathan Warson, a photographer here at the Mighty Limit Midway Speedway, but Derek Davis coming out of turn number four, two more laps to go. And two, one and two, Ferreira gonna dive bomb Davis again, nothing there. Call Cheevers to the back bumper of Ferreira, the three car battles. Cheevers is riding a wheelie down the back stretch. Watch out, 45, he's got her hooked up and ready to go out of turn number four, but Davis is gonna get the one to go. One more time around and we got a three car battle. Here we go, down the back stretch they go. Derek Davis, Anthony Ferreira, the 45 of Colt Chambers, all right there, coming out of turn number four. It's gonna go to the 14th of Derek Davis. Hey, we forgot somebody on our traveling road show. Jeff Ogle with Cash Money Late Models. That's right. He sent yeah. me a text message. He's like, you forgot me with hey, a sad face. I always, I, I always hate doing that because you're always afraid you're going to miss out on somebody. And we did. Sorry, Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. Jeff Ogle, the uh, scorer and uh, race director there of the Cash Money Late Model Series. All right. He race number two coming out of the track right now, starting on the pole in the 83 is going to be the godfather, Scott Campbell. On his outside of the 28, Wesley Briggs. Row number two on the inside is going to be the 28L of Brandon Lyons. On his outside of the 11, Justin Yakko. Row number three on the inside of the 43 is going to be Skyler Teague. On his outside, the 4C of Braden Connor. Row number four on the inside is going to be the 21 of Mason Roden. On his outside, the 6T of Austin Treadway. And starting shotgun, row number five, the 25 of Billy Jones. All right, you got him stacked in path. Keith the flag man gonna do his little jig there, getting ready to drop the green flag. And here we go, down the front stretch, here comes Campbell. Down into one and two they go. Campbell right there, your leader to 28. Of Wesley Briggs right there in second. Here comes Brandon Lyons in the other 28. It's the battle of the 28s right there in second. Side by side to turns three and four. It's gonna go to the 83 of Campbell. We got trouble in turns number three. We're gonna run them through and Joker Welling caution coming out. We got one lap completed. Mason Roden and Billy Jones going around there in three and four. I believe we had 34 Midwest Modifies. 34, 35 Midwest Modifies checked in for tonight's race and action as this Midwest modified class in the Ozarks have just blossomed. Exploded. And exploded. And there is a lot of Midwest modified drivers in the area. We appreciate each and every one of them for being here tonight. So the 28 L of Brandon Lyons will have the choice between the bottom or the top. He will choose that bottom lane. So the 28 of Wesley Briggs will go on the outside. Good to see some new drivers with us, some familiar drivers that's been with us in the past. 
on the track and in the stands. A lot of familiar drivers here tonight. Here we go. Green flag is back in the air as they go down a front stretch with a fake 66 trust sporty out of money here tonight. The 83 is Scott Campbell out front. Look at that 43. Teague out there in that 43 on the inside of Briggs. Skyler Teague, one of the young guns in the class right now, a 15, 16 year old right there in the 43, getting some good laughs in right now with the Godfather. Scott Campbell starting to pull away though, but here comes Teague to the inside of Brandon Lyons. Down the back chute, they're gonna go through three and four comes Campbell at a turn number four. A little bit of a bobble there by the 83, but he's gonna lead another one. Campbell out front, the Godfather out front, your leader, the 28 of Brandon Lyons in second, Young Gun, the 43 is Skyler Teague right there in third. They got the 28 of Wesley Briggs in fourth, but it is Scott Campbell out in front on this heat race. Oh, Campbell's got the drone following there in through one and two, bobbles it again, turns it a little sharp, but he's got a lot of room as T's gonna bobble, Briggs is gonna come back up to the third spot. Now the max shoot, they're gonna go. As Campbell checks out, it's gonna go across the line again. Everyone else is coming out of turn number four. Campbell out front, Brandon Lyons in second, the 28 of Wesley Briggs in third. Right now, pretty much single file, but the godfather, Scott Campbell, is out front. Nobody in the zip code as he takes another lap. And Scott Campbell there on a Sunday evening cruise out here through the Ozarks. Lions and Briggs, and here comes Teague on a dive bomb, doesn't stick. Here comes Treadway and Jones, but Scott Campbell gonna get the one to go this time by. White flag is in the air one more time around. Look at that race in the middle of the pack, though, between the 25 of Billy Jones and 16 of Austin Treadway and the 43 of Skyler Teague. But it is all the Godfather. The 83 of Scott Campbell getting it done here tonight in he race number two. The 28 of Brandon Lyons coming home second. The 28 of Wesley Briggs coming home third. Did you notice that? I said Scott Campbell, and then I took a breath, a long breath, and then I said Brandon Lyons. That's how long of a big of a lead he had. Scott Campbell checked out early. So we figured something out, Kitten. You don't have to have a driver's license to race here at the Mountain Living Midway Speedway. You can be 15 years old and still compete in our classes. Yeah, I'm not quite sure of his age, but I know he's one of them young guns, so he's doing pretty good out here tonight. Here we go, he race number three for the Norris Logging Power Ride. Midwest Modifying's on the pole for this one. Out of Lebanon, Missouri, it'll be the 68 of Donnie Betts. On his outside, it's gonna be the 92 of Keith Cheever. Good to have Keith Cheever back with us. Row number two on the inside from Lebanon, Missouri. It's gonna be the 42 of Trevor Elliamson on his outside from Lebanon, as well as the 05 of Cheyenne Bauman. Row number three on the inside from Marshfield, Missouri. It's gonna be the 15 of Trent Wynn. On his outside from Sparta, Missouri, it's gonna be the 59 of Rob Muhlenberg. Row number four on the inside will be the 87 of Aaron O'Dell. On the outside will be the 5H of Austin Huntley. And row number five, he is uh, came in late in the Midwest Modifying Division, but is doing some great things. It's the 84 of Dayton Dole. Looks like the 87 of Aaron O'Dell choosing to go tailback for this one. So here we go, lights are off for the Norris Hogging Power Eye Midwest Modified Heat Race number three. They come in the turn number four. Green flag is in the air. Out front there is the 68 of Donnie Betts. The 92 of Keith Cheever is back with us here at the Mighty Midway Speedway. Ran a weekly with us here, but Betts goes up the high side. Look at all the cars that go high in there in turns three and four. Lots of moving and shaking here early, but right now it's Donnie Betts there in the 68. Keith Cheever though in the 92, not given. But here comes the 84, Dayton Newell, working his way up. Oh, the 42 going around there. Oh, hold it on, big collection. Uh, Trevor Ellingson, Ellingson 
was going around there and collected. That looks Ma Muhlenberg. Looks like Keith Cheevers and oh. Cheyenne I all think, collected there. I think Keith Cheevers was the one that went around. We'll watch it here. Hey, on the Midwest Sheet Metal Instant Replay. Hey, the old replay. <laughs> right here we go. See the 92 right there. Keith Cheevers and too much. Yeah, and then yeah, Ellington too, goes around, but he continues on. But then Too much by quits. Keith Cheevers going around there. Quicks to 59 of Rob Muhlenberg. Send it in a little too hard, bud. And we want to welcome everybody that is watching on our Facebook Live look in. Race to save, race to save.com, suicide prevention. We appreciate each and every one of you for being on hand with us here tonight. Where you may be in the stands watching online at showmedirt.tv or on our Facebook page. If you're on our Facebook page, make sure you hit the like button as we got a challenge going on. If you are watching live tonight, Feel free to take a selfie, take a picture of your watch party. The 5 H here, Hunt, we lost something in the rear end, and there's fluid all through one and two. Also, tonight, don't forget about the 50 50 raffle going on there for the Unforgotten Heroes Foundation. They got the 50 50 raffle going on as uh, the Joker welding caution is still out. I want to thank 66 Trust for adding the money tonight for the Midwest Modifieds for the top five positions. Norris Logging, Norris Logging, a family owned and operated business specializing in harvesting, marketing, hardwood, timber. Check them out on Facebook or give them a call at 417-664-6366. Kent, you've been announcing at a few tracks, and uh, tell the fans, what about this announcer's booth here at the Mighty Limit Midway Speedway, especially with the bird's eye view? It's pretty cool, ain't it? Oh, man, some of the tracks I've been to, you know, you're, you're lower, but up here at the Midway, you're, so, you're high. You want to talk about a bird's <laughs> eye view. I can see every aspect, aspect of this track and not have any issue with it at whatsoever. So the bird's eye view up here is it's almost like you're watching showmedirt.tv all night long. What I love also is you got a good view of the pit area, especially for our officials here in the booth, so they can watch the cars, especially if they got a flat tire or, or mechanical trouble. We can see if they're working on the car or whether they parked the car to get back on the track. What I also like to see is I like to see the, the pit fans align along <laughs> the back fence. Just the diehards back there, because you know when they're coming down the back stretch, they're going to get sprayed with mud and dirt. <laughs> and if there's an old saying in dirt track racing, if you don't have dirt in your beer, you're not at a real race. And I guarantee you, 90% of them out there have dirt in their drink. So we got the a Anheuser Busch beer garden. But you, as a driver, you'd have to like going off of turn number two and seeing all those people on the fence right there. That makes it all exciting for the drivers as well. But the 68 of Donnie Betts is out front, your leader. One lap in the books. Donnie Betts is going to pace him down the back stretch. Trevor Ellingson there and Trent Wynn, they're right behind him. Keith the Flagman going to do his little jig, looking for the green flag to drop. And here we go. We're back out of here at the mighty Midway Speedway. Tony Pence out front. Your leader, 15 0 and Trent Wynn right there in second, the 42. And Trevor Ellingson in third, but Trent Wynn is on the outside of Betts. It's a drag race down the front stretch. Trent Wynn going to take that lap right there, dancing with the devil on the high side early and often as we got trouble in turn number one and two. Keith Cheever and Dayton Newell getting collected there. Oh, oh there's a lot of trouble there for the value two of Keith Cheevers and the 84 of Dayton Newell. Hate to see that for those two drivers there. If you look, they're having a pleasant little conversation between each other. 
They are? Yeah, they're waving at each other. They're probably like, hey, uh, was that you or me? Who caused that? I you, went a little left, you went a little right. You have State Farm or Allstate? <laughs> <laughs> you got the Geico? <laughs> you got the Gecko? Or Flo? I'm not sure. Have you called the towing company yet? Watch it here on the instant replay, Midwest Sheet Metal. As they go there in turns number one, and the I too, Keep Chambers just slid right yep. in to Dayton Newell there. You hate it too, because this is, I believe, for both drivers, their first time here this season. As the Joker welding caution flag gives out. You're pro we're probably going to need tow trucks for both truck, both cars. As as you look off into turn number four, though, if you're a photo taker, that's where you got to look right now. The sun is creeping down over them trees right there, and it is a beautiful sight to see. It is. It's the beauty of the Ozarks here. And uh, speaking of photographers, we got Sean the grind staff here, our track photographer. She does an outstanding job. As right now, she is smiling and laughing because she's being talked about. Well, we have a couple other photographers down there as well. We got Checker Chick Photography. Yep. And she's here with the Unforgotten Heroes Foundation. She's down there off of turn number four. And also we have Remember When Photography as well down there on the infield. And, uh, you know, you like how you talk about people and they, like, look up and they smile and they laugh. And, uh, and we appreciate everybody here for our media side here at the track. And also, I believe we got some... The company out of New York here, also to do like an article and uh, yeah, we got, I believe that's him right there. I think that's him. I want to say that's him. I'll just say that's him, but a reporter from New York here to do a story on the racetrack, trying to get the word out there about the mighty little bit midway speedway. And uh, there you see the damage there to the 92 of Keith Cheevers. That, uh, that is a look very good from where we're sitting right now and that's going to be a Hopefully there's something that he's going to have to work through a B feature to try to make his way to the main event later tonight. But there's going to be a lot of front-end work going on that 92 to get him back out. Also, I believe I also saw another uh, photographer, not really a photographer, but uh, Josh Mathis is with us as well. Josh Mathis does a lot of work with GoPros and uh, goes around and puts GoPros in cars. And uh, <laughs> I got also a word from Nathan Warson. Nathan Warson is the drone guy. And he says, the other announcer didn't know what to think of me. <laughs> I did not know what to think. I, I literally thought that was a bird with a death wish. Or got it's a bird. Off. It's a plane. <laughs> so I cannot wait to see that footage. That is for sure. Because that was an awesome battle that he was right on top of. And if you? I can't even play a PlayStation that good. You will have to go on Facebook and YouTube and look up Nathan Warson, Warson Photography. I'm going to do that right now. He does a, a lot of uh, realtor work, a lot of uh, sponsorship with making videos and does an outstanding job. And uh, he takes a drone in small, small places. You know, like on TV and stuff, you see those drone races and stuff. He could probably compete in one of them. He does a fantastic job. Uh, with our local businesses here in Lebanon. I just found him on the old Facebook. Had to go at him there. Look at that car. See that car? Oh, man, just <laughs> man, some rally racing there. R rally racing. I mean, it, there, there's there's nothing. Uh, with a drone, I mean, those are, there's so many different controls with those. And uh, I'd rather drive a race car than a drone. Let's just put it that way. Well, I told people about the first time I flew a drone. It was my brother's. He got it for his birthday. And I was the first one to fly it, and I got it stuck in a tree. And so he never got to fly it. So that's my experience with a drone. <laughs> that's about mine. I, I <laughs> crashed my kids into the side of our house, and that was the end of that one. So the 84 of Dayton Duel on the tow there for our night auction push truck and tow service. Once again, we appreciate each and every one of you for being here on Memorial Day weekend. Hopefully you have an action-packed weekend, and hopefully a lot of you uh, got some time to go out and uh, spend some time outside. And uh, 
I know a lot of people go to the cemeteries and decorate the cemeteries and uh, you know can we lose a lot of great people in our life and it's a uh, good to have a weekend a national holiday to remember the uh, unforgotten heroes that the fight for our country and the unforgotten heroes in our lives as uh, grandparents and you know, great grandparents as a as a veteran myself you know when, when i spent time in iraq we, we lost i lost three of good good friends of mine so this weekend's a very very emotional weekend for me and i know tomorrow for sure uh when i send some text messages out to close buddies of mine and uh it'll be a, it'll it's a rough one uh for sure but we all make sure we check on each other uh a couple times a week just to make sure we're all still here and it's a, a, what Unforgotten Heroes are doing for the families of those that have been lost is absolutely outstanding, and I love exactly what they're doing. But you know, that's why we do this. It's why we have races on Memorial Day weekend, because we want you to spend time with your family, your friends. We want you to go to the cemeteries, but we also want you to come to a place where you can for uh, keep get your mind off of things a little bit and enjoy some racing action here at the Mighty Lebanon Midway Speedway. It's always good to have a mental block, you know, when, you, when you're thinking of things like that, but it's always good to remember, and that's what this, it's a memorial for a weekend. As we're back to green flag action, Trent Wynn's going to lead him down the front stretch. Donnie Betts right behind him. Ellingson there as well. Here comes the 59, though. Rob Muhlenberg to the inside of the Ellingson down the back stretch, looking for that third spot into turn three. Here comes your leader, Trent Wynn. Betts is going to slide up the track. Ellingson as well. Everyone, Ellingson's got a little bit of aerodynamics going on with that door panel. Trent Wynn out front right now to 68 of Donnie Betts in second, the 59 of Rob Muhlenberg. Ozarks Racer Hall of Famer now 59 machine right there running in third, but it is all Trent Wynn out front in that 15. Here comes Muhlenberg up to that second spot early. Betts is going to get around, try to get around on the high side down out of turn number two. We got a drag race down the back stretch. Trent Wynn trying to check out. Muhlenberg though slides in front of Betts. Betts trying to get to the sniff underneath the back bumper of Muhlenberg, but Wynn's going to lead another lap. So far, we got a smooth and groove racing track here tonight. Trent Wynn out front with Ben Glee there on the 59 of Rob Muhlenberg. He will come out of turn number four with two more laps to go. Trent Wynn still your race leader. Rob Muhlenberg's got up there with Donnie Betts still on his back bumper as the drone cam is back out keeping up with Rob Muhlenberg. Man, I'm gonna be calling that drone all night long as Trent Wynn's gonna see the one to go this time. White flag is out one more time around there for the 15 of Trent Wynn. And the 59 of Rob Muhlenberg in second. Here we come out of turn number four. Trent Wynn gets the win. And the 59 of Rob Muhlenberg in second. And the 16 of Donnie Betts in third. I like that. Trent Wynn gets the win. It's catchy. <laughs> it is catchy. Trent Wynn gets the win. Not only his first heat race win, but this is his second heat race win this season here at the Mighty Lemon Midway Speedway as he got one in week number two, round number two. So we get ready for heat race number four. Rolling out on the track right now for heat race number four, starting on the pole in the 18P, Shane Paxton. On his outside in the 33X, Steve Muhlenberg. Row number two on the inside is going to be the 32 of Joe Francis on his outside in the 64, Pete Richardson. Row number three on the inside in the 15R is going to be Oakley Raglan on his outside in the 48, Zach Cheever. And row number four starting on the inside will be the 7W of Wesley Breedlove on his outside in the 49, Nick Farrell. Here we go. Green flag is in the air. Down the front stretch, Shane Paxton's gonna try, oh, bumping and banging into turn number one. Steve Muhlenberg and Paxton get collected together. They're gonna keep it straight. Down and they're still hooked up. Shane Paxton losing every bit of bumper on his car, but he's gonna come down the front stretch looking like a sprint car. We got a bullfight right now between the 33 of Steve Muhlenberg and the 18 of Shan Paxton and 64 Pete Richardson. Three wide down the back stretch. Pete Richardson right now, your current power eye Midwest modified point leader in the national point standings. He comes down the front stretch at the line. Wow, what a finish. 
Oh, Pete Richardson gonna be bumping and banging in a one and two. Shane Paxson still got a little bit of door panel coming off and that same door panel was giving him issues last night as well as Richardson and Muhlenberg gonna battle it out. Coming out of turn number four, Muhlenberg on the high side, but Richardson's gonna take that lap. Right now, Pete Richardson, right now, four for four, and heat race wins. This is round number five. Looks to get that fifth heat race win. He has three feature wins in four weeks. He has been the man to beat, but Steve Muhlenberg in that second spot, also a feature winner this season. Lots of sheet metal uh, flapping everywhere on these cars. Joe Francis there in the 32 has got a parachute on the front end of his car, but right now Richardson still holding on. Here comes Muhlenberg charging hard there on the at a turn number four. Richardson still holding strong. Right now Richardson out front. Steve Muhlenberg right there in second. The 32 is uh, smoking. Joe is not smoking the night, but he's ready to third, but the Joker welding caution flag coming out. Wesley Breedlove going around there in turn number four. You know what's cool? You get four heat races. We've had two different drivers win this season. Steve Muhlenberg in the 64 of Pete Richardson. You get four heat races. What's the odds of them two getting in the same heat? That's, oh, he's got some fluid leaking there. So the 32 and Joe Francis, the 18 of Shannon Paxton in the shoot there in chart number three. So you, I don't mention this, this every week here, but the staging guy and the turn three guy, Joe Seaman, he is the owner of Joker Welding. And I think he loves these caution flags because he gets a moment to shine bright here in these cautions as a, he gets a television time here during the Joker Welding Caution. Well, he's giving us a full moon right now. Working on the 18P there, Shane Paxton. A lot of sheet metal tear up right there on his car. Had some issues with that last night, too, as he was flapping in the wind. Must have. So we got some time here. Kitten. Let's talk about your... Uh, shirt choice there you know a lot of people might know this guy but kitten blackburn right now is sporting a prime time tony jackson jr t-shirt kitten blackburn we say ceo producer uh, behind the wheel got an interview with prime time tony jackson jr and i say tony's probably here tonight and it, 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 he is so we we got it's official tony is here and you're supporting his t-shirt yeah you know i got to talk to tony at lucas oil during the spring nationals and i tell you what getting to sit and talk with him and i was hanging out with uh, glenn powell helping him pit throughout the night right next to tony and uh, you got to watch tony's crew work throughout the night it was a blast to get a, to chat with him and the fact that he's here tonight supporting some local racing is is even better so uh tony if i see you later on the night good to see you as we get ready to go back green flag racing Tony Jackson Jr. won the Show Me Show shootout last night. Midwest Sheet Metal sponsored the Show Me Shootout. As 64 of Pete Richardson is out front. 33 of Steve Muhlenberg in second. The 32 of Joe Francis in third. Down the front stretch they go. Pete Richardson still out front, your leader. Pete Richardson still holding that low line there with Steve Muhlenberg still trying to get to him. Francis has got that front end fixed and Shane Paxson still got that door panel flipped up in the air, slowing him down a little bit. Richardson going to get the one to go. Richardson out front, the 733 of Steve Muhlenberg right there with Richardson down the back stretch. They go. Here we go. One, two more turns and half a front stretch. Who's it going to be at the line? It's going to be the 64. Pete Richardson, his heat race streak continues on to round number five. Wow, that is a testament. Five rounds, five heat race wins for the 64 of Pete Richardson so far this season. All right. 
We're getting ready for the moment we've all been waiting for. We've been advertising this race all season long. It is time to bring out the Cash Money Late Model Series as we will turn it over to the voice of the Dirt Track Bank Cash Money Late Model Series, Kenton Blackburn. All right, Cash Money Late Model time here at Midway Speedway, and here's how they're going to roll out for heat race number one. Starting on the pole in the 16E is going to be Sean Eggman. On his outside in the 16 is going to be Rick Brown. Row number two on the inside, and your current rookie of the year points leader, the 50P of Justin Parrish. On his outside in the 29, Chandler Mooning. Row number three in the 67, it's jamming Jimmy Van Zant. On his outside in the 5JR, Noah Ames. And starting shotgun in the 26D, it's going to be Jonathan Dean. Justin Parrish there, you can see he's got the orange spoiler. He is the current rookie points leader for your cash money points series right now. And he's sitting in third place overall. Your top five are separated by under 100 points, by under probably 70 points as they are sitting right now. Sean Eggman, there's a little bit of fluid there in three and four. These guys are going to roll through right now, but race fans... Late models right now are going to be stacked and packed and ready to go on a beautiful track here by Clinton Crew. It is turned out. The cushion is high. Turn number four, the coming out of turn number four, they have been absolutely fast all night long. The cash money late models, they like to jump to the high side quick and early. They're going to run one more time through there, and then they're going to get stacked and packed and ready to go. Kenton, talking about precious memories, we have done a lot of Cash Money Late Model features in the past, and excited to get one tonight. Oh, it does not get <laughs> any better than the best of the Midwest right here with your Cash Money Late Model series. As they are going to get lined up here, Jimmy Van Zant sitting at top 10 in points. He's been consistent all year long. Got to talk to him a little bit before the race, and he's just had... You know, a tire here, a tire there, you know, the, just the, the racing bug right now. But I'm telling you, if there's any driver that wants to get that monkey off his back to go to victory lane, it's the 67. Jimmy Van Zant, also a driver over at the asphalt track here in Lebanon. So you Lebanon fans will recognize that 67 of Jimmy Van Zant. All right, getting ready to go green flag. Keep the flag, man, getting ready to drop the green. And here we go. Eggman's going to lead him down the front stretch as we got Moody doing a little bumping and banging. Parrish slicing and dicing, working his way. But here comes the 26 of Jonathan Dean from the back row, working his way up quick to third as they come through three and four, coming out of turn number four. As we got one going around there, it's going to be a five JR of Noah Ames. Noah Ames in the 5JR going around there on the high side there of three and four. As we were getting ready to have a heck of a run there between Parrish and Eggman down the front stretch. But how about the 26D of Jonathan Dean? There was a little bit of contact earlier in Going to go back to the original start. Did not get a lap completed. Jonathan Dean, I believe the 16. There, Rick Brown have ran with us in our weekly classes here at the Mighty Midway Speedway as we run late models here weekly for the cash money rule package. So a few of these drivers, if you are a weekly fan here, you're going to recognize a few of these drivers here tonight. This is their second night of racing this week. Last night, they were out at West Plains running. Bunch of them coming out here again tonight. Lots of points on the line as we get ready down the back stretch. It's Eggman and Brown going to lead the front row looking for the green flag from Keith the Flagman coming out of turn number four. And here we go. Down the front shoot. Rick Brown got a good jump that time. Coming into one and two, Eggman on the low side, Brown on the high side, Van Zant 
trying to get it going there in the middle. Nothing doing as as Noah Ames going to go around in one and two. That's his second caution by himself. So Noah Ames is going to have to work his way to pit road. He will have to go back. We're gonna go back green, flag racing outside. Here we go, we got them stacked and packed and ready to go. Eggman and Brown still on your front row. No laps complete yet for heat race number one. Down the front stretch, here comes Eggman, got a great jump and here comes Parrish on the inside. Down through one and two, Eggman gonna try, run. oh, big contact, Mooneying. One and two. All right, so we're gonna single file them up as here we're gonna watch on the Midwest Sheet Metal instant replay. They come into one and two. Mooney sent it in a little too hard. Jonathan Dean made a little bit of contact with him, helped him around the rest of the way. And Jonathan Dean had to go play with that infield tractor tire. There he is in the infield on the four wheeler. Man that does it all around here. Not all, but he has a lot of people that help him staff wise but that is the owner of the mighty limit midway speedway clint the man gan right there sunglasses on cruise around in the four-wheeler he was super stoked we talked to him before the races he was super stoked about how the track was going to be tonight he was excited he says is he was going to work or it's not we'll find out tonight and right now in my mind it is absolutely working watching them cars come out of turn number four is something to see they got a lot of momentum we're gonna single file restart here. Eggman on the front by himself, looking for the green flag. We're back, cash money racing down the front, shooting here, we're gonna go into one. Eggman still your race leader. Brown trying to get to the inside. Here comes Jimmy Van Zandt on the inside of Parrish down the back stretch. They're gonna silhouette side by side. Brown to the inside of Eggman through three. Coming out of turn number four, got a good run here side by side. Gonna make a little bit of contact. Well, we got a race leader, Rick Brown, go to the race lead on lap number one. He's gonna get down to the low side of the track. Eggman's gonna come and almost spin. Gonna get into Jimmy, Jimmy Van Zant. Lots of cars getting everywhere. Jonathan Dean in the infield almost, but Brown is gonna start driving away right now, but he's got Jimmy Van Zant barking up the rear end here, coming out of turn number two, but here comes the rookie points leader. The 50 pay of Justin Paris trying to reel them in. Sitting there in that third spot right now, Rick Brown coming out of turn number four. Gonna get another lap in the books. Had a lot of jitters right now for these guys. Thousand dollars on the line for your Cash Money Late Model Series tonight. Jimmy Van Zant still. Trying to reel in the leader of Rick Brown. A couple restarts, had to get it done. Laps are starting to tick down now as we are halfway through heat race number one. Rick Brown down the back stretch. Paris trying to catch the back of Jimmy Van Zant as Dean and Mooney are getting ready to start duking it out right now as they're just trying to find where these cars are gonna fit on a different surface than they have been used to out here at Midway Speedway. Is Van Zant getting an inch and ever closer to the 16, gonna get up there underneath the bumper a little bit, sending it hard through three and four. Van Zant got to the back bumper of Brown, but Brown still holding on, a little bit of a tire up there on the 16, coming through one and two. Down the back stretch to Brown, and here comes Van Zant and Parrish as they still been duking it out. Your top three cars have separated themselves from the field. One to go for the 16 of Rick Brown. Jimmy Van Zandt's got to do it now if he's going to get her done. Coming to the inside, he's got a good little run down here on the back stretch and bobbled it down the back stretch. Brown in through three for the final time for heat race number one. Van Zandt going to drive it in hard. Coming out of turn number four for the final time for heat race number one, Rick Brown's going to take it. Jimmy Van Zandt, then Justin Parrish, your top three. What a run there for Jim and Jimmy Van Zandt. A lot of you Lebanon fans will know that name, but what about the run there for the 16 of Rick Brown, your heat race winner? All right, your cash money late models. Heat race number two, rolling out on the track right now. Starting on the pole in the 42 is going to be Dustin Mooneyham. On his outside in the 73, Francisco Escamilla. Row number two on the inside in the double zero is going to be Landon Harris on his outside. The 4A of Dustin Atkinson. 
Row number three, he's gonna be your current points leader, the 52 of Mitch Keeter. And on his outside in the 23, Mark Simon. Boy, I heard you guys get loud from old Mark Simon down there. We got the Mark Simon fan base here tonight. On the right side of the flag stand. Eight laps of distance. Everyone's going to transfer to tonight's main event. Mooneyham and Escamilla are there on the front row there in that 73 on the outside. Landon Harris, Dustin Atkinson. Again, Mitch Keeter there, the green spoiler on the 52, meaning he is the current points leader, and it is a narrow point. I believe it's a 23-point lead for Mitch Keeter right now. As the field's gonna pace one more time. Eight laps the distance for your cash money late model heat races tonight. This is a stacked heat race right here. A lot of local guys, our local points leader, the four of us at Atkinson, right there, Mark Simon and him have been trading wins this season. When they got the point leader, 52 of Mitch, Mitch Keeter, Looking for the green flag. Mooneyham's going to bring him down the front stretch. Good jump there for the 42. Escamilla right there. Going to do a little bit of high side hustling. Mooneyham going to slide through one and two as we got a bumping and banging. Simon right there on the back of Mitch Keeter, though. Down the back street, they're going to go. Landon Harris gets shuffled to the back of the track right now, but Mooneyham going to come out of turn number four, and he's going to lead lap number one and start putting some distance on the field right now. But Keeter has moved up to that third spot, but Atkinson coming to the high side trying to get around him. Escamilla with a little bit of bobble there on the top of turn two. And here comes Keeter to the inside of him. Mitch Keeter going from the back row, looking to get to the front quick. Two laps in the book, though. It's all been Dustin Mooneyham earlier, but here comes the 52 of Mitch Keeter. Mark Simon and Atkinson going to battle it out there in the back. The 73 of Francisco Escamilla getting it in there at third is Mooneyham's going to lead another lap in the books. Mitch Keeter trying to find a, a couple different lines right now, trying it early as Atkinson and Escamilla and Simon right there. We got a three car battle back there for third and fourth as they're gonna start battling out. But Keeter is inching ever closer to the 42 of Dustin Mooneyham as we are halfway through this one. Down the last stretch, Mooneyham's gonna go. Still got a good little lead over the 52 of Keeter. Keeter gonna drive it in a little bit lower. He started coming out high out of turn number four and hasn't worked yet. Mooneyham right now, all the 42 right now, five in the books. Down the back chute, you're going to go as they fall. Single file down the back stretch into three and four at a turn. Number four, Mooneyham has been in total control as Keeter trying to reel him in right now, but right now down to the back stretch, Keeter's going to get a little run. Mooneyham. Keeter gets just closer a little bit, little bit after coming out of turn number four. Still Mooneyham, your race leader. White flags in the air for the 42 of Dustin Mooneyham. Can Mitch Keeter get something to go here? He's going to inch a little bit closer out of turn number two, but Mooneyham still got a good two, three car lengths on him into turn number three. Coming through turn number three, coming out of turn number four for the final time for heat race number two. Winner going to be Dustin Mooneyham. Mitch Keeter, Dustin Atkinson going to be your top three. Good domination right there by the 42 of Dustin Mooneyhan, Mitch Keeter trying a couple different lines that time. Gonna make some adjustments on the 52, but this is gonna be lining up to be in a good feature race. All right, your Cash Money Late Models Heat Race number three is gonna line up like this. Starting on the pole in the XR11 is gonna be Sean Duncan. On his outside in the 662 is gonna be Caden Campbell. Row number two on the inside in the 82 is gonna be Jace Parmley. On his outside in the 33, Mike Bentner. Row number three on the inside is going to be the 13 of Sean Whitman. On his outside in the 26, Glenn Powell. Again, all of our late model drivers are going to make their way to the main event tonight. Sean Duncan, Caden Campbell there on the front row. Jace Parmley. Top five in points right now. He's had a heck of a run here. A few few weeks, few races. He's been putting on some good stuff. Got some bad luck a few weeks ago. Down the road 
at Springfield. Got collected in an accident with lap traffic that took him out of the win. That was a tough break for him. He had he had her by a whole lap. Coming down the back stretch, Sean Duncan, Caden Campbell gonna be looking for the green flag out of turn number four. Keith, the flag man, giving ready to give the green flag in. Here we go. Down the front stretch, Sean Duncan gonna fly up the speedway, slam the door on Caden Campbell. And here comes Parmley to the inside as Powell goes around in turn number one. Glenn Powell going around there in turn number one, the Joker welding. Caution flag gonna come out here. As we watch the Midwest Sheet Metal instant replay here as they come flying into turn number one, Glenn Powell just sent it in a little too hard, a little too early. We'll get them stacked and packed here. Looking to go green flag this time. By lineup looks good. Sean Duncan, Caden Campbell there on the front row. Jace Parmley, Mike Mitten row number two. Green flag's in the air. Sean Duncan does the same thing, slides up, opens the door for Parmley, and there goes the 82 to the race lead through one and two, but here comes Duncan back to the inside and bringing Bentner with him. Down the back stretch, they're gonna fall single file. Here they come into three. It's still Parmley, Don Duncan, and Bentner coming out of turn number four as Powell got collected a little bit, but kept it going. As Chase Parmley right now in the 82 has got it figured out early, coming down three and four, starting to open up a little bit of lead over the XR11 of Sean Duncan. Down the front stretch, gonna lead lap number two. Duncan, Bettner, Whitman, Campbell, and Powell's how they're lined up right now as they go single file down the back stretch. Parmley going into three as Powell comes out of number two. Lots of racing action all over the speedway right now. Parmley through one, then Duncan, Bettner right now. They're all trying to figure out the way around the speedway early, but right now, the man on a mission, the 82 of Jace Parmley, is on a mission, made a heck of a move on the start of the race, got to the front quick and just kept going. Sean, Mike Bender now getting to the back bumper of the uh, Sean Duncan down the back stretch. They're gonna go, so the battle for seconds getting ready to hit up. Here comes Bender and Duncan coming out of turn number four. Bender's right there on the back end hit Duncan. And still the Parmley show right now. Here comes Duncan on the high side. Bentner there, Sean Whitman there in the 13 in no man's land. Coming out of turn number four across the stripe. Parmley still all by himself. Duncan and Bentner still trying to get there. Bentner gets a little bit of a run as Duncan's gonna bob a little, little bit out of turn number two, but Duncan's gonna slam the door as Parmley's gonna come out of turn number four with the one to go for the 82 as he goes into turn number one and here comes Duncan and Bentner. Down to the back stretch comes your race leader for the final time. Through turn number three, coming out of turn number four for a heat race, number three for your Cash Money Dirt Series. It's gonna be the 82 of Chase Parmley. And again, coming out of turn number four, good run there. It's still gonna be Sean Duncan holding off the 33 of Mike Bittner, your top three. What some good heat races there for the Cash Money Late Model Series. Nathan Warson keeping up with the late models in his drone. That's pretty neat to see, but man, what a race there. Got quick times there for the late models to get those heat races in. And it's gonna set up for an exciting feature tonight. Everybody makes the feature as we get ready now for the J2 Cars USRA B-Mons. One of three heat races on the pole for this one. Out of Jefferson City, Missouri, will be the 71C of Cody Crabtree. On his outside from Stratford, Missouri, will be the two of Adam Kaltenbach. Row number two on the inside from Crocker, Missouri, will be the 18H of Justin Newman. On his outside from Springfield, Missouri, it's going to be the 22X of Chad Donaldson. Row number three on the inside from Whitman, Missouri, will be the six of Jay Flynn. And on his outside from Lynchburg, Missouri, it'll be the 15H of Jeremy Hazel. In row number four out of Fairgrove, Missouri, in the 15, it'll be Caden Stacy. Lights are off as we get ready for the J2 Cars USRA B Mod Heat Race number one. Green flag is in the air. 
Cody Crabtree out front there, but here comes Adam Kahnbach. And look out, here comes 18H and Justin Newman on the inside there of Kahnbach. Side by side as they go to turns three and four. Who's going to take lap number one at the line? It's going to be Kahnbach. Here comes the 15, though, with Caden Stacy. Went from the back up to third. But look at the race there for the lead. Now the back stretch, they go. Newman with the advantage going into turns three and four. Cotton Buck on the outside as they go down the front stretch. Caden Stacy right there as well. Holy smokes, everything going on right now. Newman right now, your race leader, Kaltenbach. Stacy here, top three down the back shoot. They're gonna go into turn number three. Newman gonna go into turn number three. Kaltenbach right there, trying to work his way. Here comes Stacy to the inside of the two. Kaltenbach down the front stretch. They're gonna go. It's gonna be a drag race. Kaltenbach still gonna hold on to that second spot, but barely as Caden Stacy's got her hooked up on the low side right now. Down the back stretch, it's still gonna be the 18 of age of Justin Newman is in the battle right now for second between Colton Bach and Stacy's heated up. Caden Stacy, the 15 now runner up spot. 18 though of Justin Newman and out front your leader with a big space there between him and the 15 of Stacy. As he is, these drivers so far liking the mighty limit midway speedways. As they go down the front stretch now in the turns one and two. Down the back stretch, your race leader's gonna go. It's still gonna be Newman. He's pulling away from the field. Caden Stacy there on the low side, trying to reel him in, trying to get something going on here. But Newman right now, in a world of his own, is a 71 though. Cody Crabtree was off the pace there, got him back under fire. Still Newman out front, Stacy in second, the 15, caught Bach in the two, trying to hold off the six of Flynn, but Flynn is right there. White flag is in the air for Newman as he has one more lap to go. Newman's gonna go into turn number three. Got a little bit of lap traffic there here with Crabtree coming out of turn number four though with a checkered flag in the air. Justin Newman, Caden Stacy, Adam Kaltenbach, your top three. All right, heat race number two, getting ready to roll out onto the track right now. Starting on the pole in the 99T is gonna be Dalton Till. On his outside in the F1, Mitchell Franklin. Row number two, starting on the inside, the 42J of Donnie Jackson. On his outside, the nine of Sam Petty. Row number three, starting on the inside, the 65, the man with a bounty on his head, Chris Jackson. On his outside, the 86 of Jeff Albright, and starting shotgun in the 22, Tim Petty. Here at intermission, we're gonna be giving away a t-shirt and a license plate from the 86 team of Jeff Albright. But man, walk and loaded heat race right here. Get ready to fire off here. Chris Jackson, there's a bounty out for him because he's been the man to beat this season. Three for three out of four races for Jackson, but the green flag is in the air for Teal and Franklin as they're gonna lead him down the front stretch. It's gonna be a drag race into one and two. Franklin gonna throw her down into one and two, gonna get a good jump down the back stretch as he's gonna take the early race lead into turn number three. Teal all over that back bumper of the F1. Here comes the 42J though, Donnie Jackson right there as well. Mitchell Franklin right now got her hooked up. Look at the race up in the middle of the front. Here we got the 99 team, Dalton Teal with the nine of Sam Petty. Here comes the 65 of Chris Jackson on the inside of Teal. It's Franklin out front in the F1. Mitchell Franklin, your leader, but a lot of action going on in the middle of the pack. Watch the rear end of Chris Jackson line up. Watch the sparks fly off of that car as he gets on the brakes. As he's coming to the inside of Petty out of turn number two down the back stretch as Franklin's checking out. But Chris Jackson working his way up through the field right now, up to that second spot, coming out of turn number four, but right now the F1 of Franklin. No matter where he finishes in the heat race, he already knows his starting spot for the feature. But the F1 of Mitchell Franklin out front is your leader, 65 of Chris Jackson, starting ninth for tonight's feature. We're running in second right now on our Facebook Live look in. Mitchell Franklin down the back stretch, got a commanding lead right now as he's going into turn number three and coming out of turn number four with Chris Jackson trying to reel him and Sam Petty. And then a good race here between the 42 of Jackson 
And Sam Petty, or not Sam Petty, but Tim Petty gonna start duking it out there for fourth. It's all Mitchell Franklin out front, the 65, Chris Jackson in second, one of the race there for that fourth spot though, between the 22 and Tim Petty and the 42J of Donnie Jackson. Tim Petty right there behind the brother of Sam Petty as the white flag is out for Mitchell Franklin. And the one and two. Mitchell Franklin been in command since the drop of the green. Down the back stretch, he's gonna go with a commanding lead into three. Coming out of turn number four for the final time for heat race number two. Your winner, the F1 of Mitchell Franklin. Mitchell Franklin getting his second heat race win this season here at the Mighty Limit Midway Speedway. Chris Jackson coming home second, the nine of Sam Petty coming home third. So what a run there for heat race number two. So we get ready for the J2 cars, b -Mons heat race number three on the pole. Out of Mexico, Missouri, will be the 20th, Barry White. His outside from Stoutland, Missouri, will be the 55, G of Luke Gideon. Row number two on the inside from Fort Scott, Kansas, will be the 49 of Randy Zimmerman. On his outside will be the 24 of Jerry Ellis out of Richland, Missouri. Row number three on the inside from Fulton, Missouri, will be the 21 of Jacob Potter. And on his outside from Wheatland, Missouri, will be the 214 of Quinton Taylor. Six cars, eight laps is your distance for the J2 cars. USRA Beaumont heat race number three. As the green flag is in the air, they fire off at turn number four. Barry White to the quick lead down out of turn number two. He's gonna go with the 49 there, Randy Zimmerman. Trez, all right, they're gonna keep it going out of turn number two. We had a little bit of spinning going on out there, but the rest of the field coming out of turn number four, it's Barry White, your race leader. Barry White out front in the 20, the 49 there, Randy Zimmerman in second, the 24, Jerry Ellis in third. Barry White in the 20 out of Mexico, Missouri. And still out front. Man, Mexico, Missouri, that's a haul, but Barry White right now has got company with Zimmerman to the inside, down the back stretch to the back bumper. Oh, we got one spinning down the back stretch. Joker Welding caution coming out. Appreciate Joker Welding. Sponsor here for our cautions here at the Mighty Lemon Midway Speedway. Give them a call at 417-991-WELD. Speaking of Mexico, Missouri, we got some people watching, I believe, from the country of Mexico. Previous uh, track owner Jack and Dana Jones watching us probably from the beach laying there relaxing Oceanside there watching their previous owned racetrack here well, I mean if you're down there where else are you gonna watch it but oh, the beach there we go yeah right there hey yeah we got our own beach we got our own beach there you, you can see mother nature has been affecting us there yeah they could sit up right there in the infield you know with their chairs their beach chairs and their umbrellas and i think i might come next week and watch a race down there like that yeah i hope you're enjoying your time on the beach we're enjoying our time here in the usa here on a sunday night short track racing here at the monty Lippin midway speedway for the tony roper memorial j2 cars usrab mod heat race number three in action here, we get ready to go back green. Green flag is in the air. And look at the 49 of Randy Zimmerman with a great start there. Zimmerman to the inside, got a great start side by side. Here comes the 24 of Ellis, trying to make it a three car battle there for the lead, but right now Zimmerman to the inside, still trying to make a good, oh. well he got one up into the wall of a turn number three. That was, that was a lot of 21 damage. of Jacob Potter there. A lot of damage there. And no lap completed. Don't forget about our 50-50 raffle for the Unforgotten Heroes Foundation. 
Some girls walking around there. So don't forget about that. As lineup is good, Randy Zitterman. Out front, your leader of 20, Barry White in second. 24, Jerry Ellis in that third spot. Lights are off, get ready to go back, Grayson. Green flag is back in the air. Randy Zerman out front, the 20, Barry White off the pace there. Ellis had nowhere to go, but pushed Barry White and fired him back up there as it's still Zitterman out front. Down the front stretch, the 20, Barry White in second. The 24, Jerry Ellis in that third spot, single foul around the mighty limit midway, speedway. Uh, it is all Zitterman out front. Down out the back stretch, Zimmerman open up a commanding lead over the rest of the field, coming out of turn number four. This time by, we got a battle for second, though heating up between Ellis and White there. Ellis trying to get to the back door there, not gonna get it, coming out of turn number two. Zimmerman going into turn number three, all by his lonesome right now, coming and flying. As it is all Zitterman out front. Ellis and White though still right there trying to get it in. Ellis gonna send it in as the one the go is here comes Ellis to the inside of White coming out of turn number four. Bumping and banging down the front stretch though. Look at that battle for that runner up spot. Ellis on the inside there of White. Side by side still as it's all Zitterman out front, but Ellis right there has the advantage going to turn three and four. He slides in front of White. What a run there for the 24. Jerry, Jerry Ellis coming on second. Barry White coming on third. So we get ready now for the McAdoodles Power Eye Pure Stocks added money for them. So we get ready now for heat race number one. Starting on the pole in the 617, Todd Bithel. On his outside in the 14, Jonathan Finley. Row number two, starting on the inside in the 40, is going to be Akola Harris on his outside in the L34, the station wagon, James Reedus. Row number three, starting on the inside in the 25G, is going to be Michael Greenwood on his outside, the 13 3 of Cliff Champney. And row number four in the A. K. Tyler Knudsen. All right, lights are getting ready to not. All right, green flag is in the air. Down the front stretch, though, James Reed is there in the station wagon. You can do a little bit of high side hustling early. As a 6 1 4 is Todd trying to hold on. Oh, Reedus is over on the back stretch. Red flag, James Reedus has just flipped on the back stretch. Joker welding caution on the track with red flag conditions here on the speedway. The station wagon, the 34 of James Reedus. Going over on his lid right now, race fans on his side. Safety crews quick to respond over there. Hey, race fans just got word. Our driver, James Reedus, is okay. Here we're watching the Midwest Sheet Metal instant replay. He got cut off there. The 617 slid up the track. Reedus had nowhere to go and climbed the wall. Good thing that he is okay. As they're going to get him tipped back over. We're going to watch the Midwest Sheet Metal instant replay again. As the, uh, the station, the grocery getter there. I don't think he's going to get some groceries with that tonight. 
Well, good thing James Reedus is okay. And if I believe correctly, he's your current Power Eye National Points leader. Safety crews going to get the 34 there, hooked up, ready to go. He's out of the car. Tough break for your national points leader right there as he goes over in heat race action. You know, before, uh, earlier tonight, we were talking about all the people up against the fence right there, and they got a front row view of all that action. Is he going to, now the question is, is he going to continue or is he going to go to the pits? N knowing me personally, knowing him, I think he'll go to the pits, check his car, make sure everything's okay, and then he'll come out and run well, later on tonight. But, you know, with the prices of groceries, the groceries are going up. He's going to have to get some money tonight. We were trying to convince him to take him to the th drive-in theater in that thing one <laughs> night and see, see how many people we could clam into the back of that thing. But tough break for James Reedus there. Again, he's your current national points leader for your Power Eye Pure Stock class. And they said there's not a whole lot, just some body damage there. So the safety equipment did its job. The fans on the back stretch there in the pits, they got a heck of a show. You know, when we talk about race car safety, it has came a long ways, especially uh, from 2000 for Tony Roper and 2001 from Dale Earnhardt, it has came a long ways, not only in the NASCAR level, but levels down below, because you take a roll like that and able to get out of the car like that and not have too much damage on the car, that just shows how well these cars are built, especially those roll cages. He, he's, look, he's out looking at his car. He's climbing back into it. Say he's got a tire down. And if I, and I know Reedus, I know James pretty well, and man, they, that guy, if there's anyone that can get back out here, it's going to be him. Well, you know, when we were doing our pit walk earlier today, I heard you're probably a pretty good tire changer. You need to go over there to help him? Well, I think by the time I get there, this heat <laughs> race would be over. I don't even think they'll need a jack. You probably can lift it up and change it all at the same time. Well, I've tried that before, and it's, it's not the greatest to do. Uh, but, yeah, I'm pretty good at doing them tires. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the gentleman that told you that, uh, if you've ever picked up a late model tire, those things are the <laughs> lightest things I have ever picked up. Really? I kid you not. My my minivan's tires <laughs> are heavier than a late, money, late model tire. And I, man, I can fling them things around well. all day long, but... As he's going to come down the front stretch. Hey, race fans, they're, they're going to bring the 34 to pit road. But as he comes down the front stretch, I want you all to stand on your feet, give him a round of applause, and let him know that you appreciate him coming out here tonight. Hopefully he can get her fixed and get back out here for racing action a little bit later on with the Pure Stocks. If you cheer loud, I'm sure he will make sure he gets that car back for the future. All right, race fans, let him hear you as he comes down the front stretch. James Reedus, he's waving. He knows he wants to come back out. That car held up fantastically. That It doesn't even look like he did oh, anything. It, it don't have no damage. No damage. Did you? I think that whole side you just built was straight steel. Yep. <laughs> oh, but good, good for Reedus there as we get the, he, the cars rolling back here. He won't have to do an insurance claim on that. No car in Allstate. As they will line back up here. When we talk about lifting, Kitten, you've already done your lifting tonight. You helped Tony Wright and the uh, Richardson team uh, carry that uh, mo motor. I'm not mechanically the block. the block, yeah. Yeah, th those aren't as heavy as they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> those things, man, they used to be. I, I wouldn't have touched that without a motor jack <laughs> or a, you know, an engine jack, but. Now, that wasn't too bad. I got my lifting in for the night, so we're good. As we're getting ready to go back green flag racing. 
Appreciate McAdoodles for being a sponsor here for the Power Eye Pure Stocks as the green flag goes back in the air. Tail in the front, shooting the 617 there. Todd's gonna go into one and two, the back of the blue ride. We got almost a three car battle there. Knudsen trying to work his way as the 13's up in the wall oh. in the back side. Oh, we got him on bowl in the wall. Knudsen uh -oh. up in the wall in the back stretch. Yellow on the speedway. Caution on the speedway. Joker welding caution. That is a second time. As the 13C of Cliff Champney was going up into the wall. Knudsen went up into the wall. I, it, Watch yeah. it here on the replay. And Tyler Knudsen right now is on a three-peat win streak right now. And it looked like something happened in that four. The 40 of Akula Harris went up into the wall, too. Uh, there's something. You know what? Hey, I think we got a tricky turn, too. <laughs> but it looks like they had a 40. I don't know if anything broke. It just lost. It just slid up the tr yep. slid up a little bit of contact right there between him and Knudsen. And... So it's been pure pandemonium for our pure the way the pure stocks have started tonight. Todd Bethel gonna go back to the front. Jonathan Finley. Hate to see it there for Tyler Knudsen is he has been on a winning streak here at the Mighty Midway Speedway, but too, uh, too hard of a hit over there, 48K. Let's see if they can get that fixed for four. But you know, thing is, is there is going to be B features. Yes, the good, good thing for some of these drivers. Gonna get the field stacked back up here. Have not had a had a laugh in the books as the AK there of Canoes is gonna have to get hooked up on the record. There, the 617, the back, the blue race in there. Thank all of our great sponsors here at the Monty Lubbock Midway Speedway. Don't forget throughout the night to visit our concession stand, sponsored by Independent State Company. Since 1912, Independent State Company has crafted quality. Cooper's Cop products for wine and spirits industries. Every day, millions of people enjoy the beverages aged in our barrels at Independent Safe Company. I also want to thank Anheuser-Busch, best love brewer, creating stronger communities and meaningful moments for over 160 years. The moments where we celebrate the five challenges, dream of the brighter future we are building today, Anheuser-Busch. I also want to thank the People enjoying the Lowe's Home Improvement VIP Suites. Lowe's Home Improvement offers everyday low prices on all quality hardware products and construction needs. Lowe's is your headquarters for all building materials. Also, I want to thank Nine Auction Service for sponsoring our push truck and worker service. They've had an auction today. I'm trying to bid on some items, but lost the bid on a dresser. But where you ch could check off the next thing on your want list, not only do we hold auctions in our night auction center, but we also host on-site auctions, on-site auctions. And they pride themselves on treating people fairly and providing unmatched quality auction services. Located at 130 West Fremont Lo Road, Lebanon, Missouri. And tonight we will have four drivers going in our victory lane, sponsored by Remax Next Generation. 
Remax agents have the experience to get the job done in today's market. Outstanding agents and outstanding results. Great things happen when driven individuals come together and treat real estate as a profession. You give them a call at 417-991-3333. Once again, kids, we are having our bicycle races during intermission. We have a couple more races to put in on the track So there he is, race fans give the AK of Tyler Knutson a wave and a round of applause. Tough damage, a lot of damage there to the AK. Appreciate him for being here. Hopefully, if there's any way to get that car back together, they will get it. Here we go, lights are off. Gonna to go to the green flag this time. Tom Biffle on the pole. Green flag is in the air to 14 and Jonathan Finley. Right there racing with the 13C. Cliff Chapman as the 13C are up there in that second spot. Todd Biffle out front, your leader. 13C, it's Cliff Chapman. In that second spot, the 14 and Jonathan Finley in third. Biffle trying to hold on to the lead. The 16C right there in second, single file all the way around the Monty Levin Midway Speedway. Down the back stretch they go. 617 to Tom Biffle out front. 13. Cliff Chapman there in that second spot. Good race there for the lead. Bindle trying to hold off that 13C and 13C now on the inside. They're side by side going there in the turns three. Now four. Looks like Chapman will take the lead from the 617. To Tom Mitchell, the Chapney out front, your leader. Down the back stretch they go. Yeah, the turn number four out of four. Two more laps to go for the 13 C. Out of turn number four, white flag is in the air for the 13C of Cliff Chapney. Tom Bittnell in that second spot in 617. As Cliff Chapney will come out of turn number four, get the checker flag for the Max Vittles Power Eye Pure Stock Heat Race number one. We get ready now for heat race number two.
On the pole for this one out of Tuscumbia, Missouri. Right now, in the top five in the national point standings, it's the 5X of Justin McDowell. His outside from Conway, Missouri, will be the 41. Gregor Harris out of Conway, Missouri. Row number two on the inside from Budman, Missouri, will be the sixer of Jeff Helton. His outside right now, your current point leader here at the track out of Long Lane, Missouri, it'll be the six of Corey Henson. Row number three on the inside from Tuscumbia, Missouri, it'll be the 26 of Preston McDowell. On his outside, it'll be the five of Brian White out of Webb, Missouri. And it'll be out of Wendyville, Missouri, the 42X of Michael Nevis. Green flag is in the air. Muffield's gonna come out of turn number two, though, at number five. Right now, your race leader is, we got a caution on the speedway, the six there. Corey Henson, bottom of turn number four. He's going to take it pit side. Yeah. All right, the 26. Preston McDowell getting a lane choice right now. Going to do a Delaware double foul restart. Going to get him sacked and packed, and we're ready to go here for your Power Eye Pure Stocks. Justin McDowell there on the pull. Going to lead him down the max trench at a snail's pace. Getting ready to go. Green flag right here. Looking for the flag. And here we go. At a turn number four, they're going to come thundering down the front stretch. McDowell, your race leader with a 26. No Preston McDowell pushing him down into one and two. Here they come at a turn number two. Almost a four car battle right now. Three wide coming out of turn number four, all behind Justin McDowell. Brian White. Justin McDowell all shape moving and shaking right now, but here comes the front rows of the fives. The 26 there, Preston McDowell working his way, shaking and moving. We got a good race heating up right now. A little bit of contact at a turn number two. Here comes Preston McDowell on the inside there in the 26. Coming into turn number three, gonna dive, bomb it in there. Gonna slide through three and four. Do we have a new race leader coming out of turn number four? Here we go, Preston McDowell to the race lead. Down into one and two though, He's is he gonna hold on? He's got a couple fives right behind him. Trying to reel him in. But right now, Preston McDowell in the 26, your current race leader coming out of turn number four. Time and time again right now. 26 of Preston McDowell out front, the five. X of Justin McDowell in second. Here comes the five of Brian White there on the inside. It's the battle of the fives there for that second spot. McDowell versus White, they come down the front stretch. It's still just Preston McDowell out front. Preston McNally, your race leader, but White and McNally gonna battle it out there and the battle of the fives there for the second position. What a slide job there. Not gonna stick though, gonna see the one to go this time by for the 26 of Preston McDowell. White flag is in the air one more time around. It is the 26 of Preston McDowell out front. The five of Brian White in second, the five. X of Justin McDowell in third, the sixer Jeff Helton in fourth, but it will go to the 26th of Justin McDowell. 
Out front, your heat race winner, the five of Brian White. Second in the five. X of Justin McDowell, third. All right, he race number three for your Macadoodles Power Eye Pure Stocks. Getting ready to roll on the track right now. Starting on the pole with the number 12, Craig Dykstra. On his outside in the 1C, Scotty Carter. Row number four on the inside will be the number four, or sorry, row number two on the inside will be the number four of Dusty Rhodes. On his outside, the 1K of Brandon Knudsen. Row number three on the inside is going to be the 17 of Austin Wilson on his outside. The 22R, Colby Rathbone. Starting shotgun in row number four is the 21 of Carson Groniger. Dyke Shook Carter on the front row looking for the green flag. And here we are. Pure stock race and heat race number three down the front stretch. Side by side, Carter and Dykstra are going to go. Carter's going to ease his way up there. Going to nose his way to the front side there. They're still going to silhouette down the back stretch going into turn number three. Carter going to send it in hard. And he's going to slide up the track coming out of turn number four. Going to be a drag race to the line. Scotty Carter is going to lead lap number one. He's going to pull in front in one and two. Scotty Carter out front in the one seat of 12 of Greg Dykstra. In that second spot, the 1K of Brandon Knudsen, the brother of Tower Knudsen. Right there in third. And a good run there for the four of Dusty Rhodes. As the number lap is in the book, it's the one seat of Scotty Carter still out front. Scotty Carter putting together a good run right now. Greg Dykstra sliding up, getting a little burn jump there on the back stretch wall, tapped it a little bit. As Knudsen there trying to get Get a little bit closer there to Dykstra as they come down in a one and two. Still, Scotty Carter out front, your leader of 12, Craig Dykstra in second. The 1K of Brandon Knudsen gaining on Dykstra. It's Knudsen now looking on the inside of Dykstra. Dykstra closes the door as they go into turns three and four. It's still Scotty Carter out front. Scotty Carter in the one and two. Dykstra, though, and got Knudsen all over the back. Bumper the four dusty roads right there. Colby Rathbone trying to find his way around the track as well. But Scotty Carter checking out early here, ran to the race lead fairly quickly, but here comes Knudsen trying to get to the inside of Dykstra down to the front stretch. Down the back stretch, this one sees Scotty Carter goes, the 12 of Craig Dykstra in second, the 1K of Brandon Knudsen is sitting there in third. One sees Scotty Carter out front as he has a big lead there on the 12 of Craig Dykstra. Out of turn number four, it's still Scotty Carter getting the white flag one more time around. Down in the one and two, Scotty Carter in the one C race leader. He's gonna go into turn number three for the final time in the heat race action number three. Coming out of turn number four out of Springfield, Missouri, the one C of Scotty Carter. Greg Dykstra and Brandon Knunst in your top three. Good run there between Dusty Rhodes and Colby Rathbone. So the McAdoodles Power Eye Pure Stock Heat race number three in the books. We get ready now for our fourth and final heat race for the Power Eye Pure Stocks. Here we go on the pole for this one out of Springfield, Missouri. It'll be the 05G of Grayson McKitty, runner up in the national point standings on his outside out of Eldon, Missouri. It'll be the 88R of Robin Showers. Row number two on the inside from Forsyth, Missouri. It'll be the 42 of Adam Isaacs. On his outside from Conway, Missouri, it'll be the 42L of Levi Harris. Row number three on the inside will be the 53 of Kevin Noint out of Springfield, Missouri. On his outside will be the exclamation point SS Stan Booth out of Elton, Missouri. <laughs> I'm not going to have how that's going to go, but in the one and two. <laughs> and we got some slicing and dicing going on early, but Grayson, the silent stalker, McKinney, 
getting a good run here early here, but here comes Kevin Yon and the 53 contact right there. And Kevin Yon's gonna spin down the front stretch. The 53 of Kevin Yon going around there right in front of the flag stand. Gonna bring the caution out. Grayson McKinney though off to a good run. Gonna line back up here. Grayson McKinney gonna be back on the front row. Robin Showers there in the 88R. All right, Robin Showers went to the low side. That drone is still messing with me, Shane. I catch it out of the corner of my <laughs> eye in the most random time. There times. it is. <laughs> Thomas is keeping up with it. <laughs> oh, he lost it. <laughs> Looking for the green flag. It's going to drop, and here comes Grayson McKinney. Going to slide up to the stop side of the speedway and hammer down into one and two. Showers right behind him, and so is Booth. Booth going to bump showers down the back stretch. Kevin Yacht trying to work his way down the high side. And going to start single file running. Grayson McKinney. Winner last night down the road in I-44, further west of here, as he's trying to double up on the weekend. As we're coming down the back stretch, McKinney showers in Booth, gonna be your top three, Kevin Yacht. Oh, the 42. I'm not sure which 42 that is. 42. That's a regular, that's Adam Isaacs there. Adam Isaacs in the 42. So he has a flat tire. He will need a hook or push. Oh, wait. Did you see that? What was I looking? Is the drone coming this big? Yeah, he was right here. Hey, don't yeah, don't forget, kids, after the race in action, feel free. So go onto the track, walk around, get the walk around on the track. Then you can make your way to the pit area. Yeah, he he it flew right past this window. Ken. He's just trying to get the look of a dynamic duo up here. As we're going back to green flag races, Grayson McKinney still going to be a race leader in a one and two showers and boots still right there. Kevin Yant there in the 53, an early caution in racing action, trying to work his way to the front of the speedway. McKinney going to come into turn number three, going to come out of turn number four with showers right behind him as McKinney still going to lead this race. Grayson McKinney out front, the ADR, Robin Showers in second. What about that race there for third there? Booth and Yacht putting it on each other. Yeah. Well, that's, can I just say that's the one? Booth and the one? Yeah. Okay. Booth and the one, because that is a one. And then the 53 of Kevin Yoint right there in fourth. Single right. file around the mighty living midway speedway. Coming out of turn number four, the 05G of Grayson McKinney. Calm, cool, and collected right now as he's going into one and two, but the 88 are the showers. Trying to reel him in, but the battle between Booth gets loose at a turn number two, and that opens the door for Kevin Yon just about every time as we got a two-car battle there for third as McKinney is just comfortably trying a little bit of a higher line right now. Grayson McKinney jumps up above where the rubber is down on the low side, and he's opened up more of a lead. Coming out of turn number four this time, gonna see the one to go for the 05 out of Springfield, Missouri. Grayson McKinney on that look hit, goes high side in one and two. Down the back stretch, he's gonna go showers, trying to reel in Kevin Yon on the inside out. Booth coming out of turn number two, Booth's gonna make it stick there on the high side, but coming out of turn number four for the final time in heat race action for your power high pure style, it's gonna be Grayson McKinney. Grayson McKinney getting the heat race win. Eddie R. Robin Showers coming home second.
believe that will wrap it up for our heat race action here. So we have some B features. Two B features for the Midwest. Two B features for the Pure Stocks. And it, it will be time for a kids' bicycle races. So, all right, kids, we have two B features for the Midwest Modifieds. After the Midwest Modifieds, you can make your way down to turn number one at that green gate right there with your bicycle to get ready for our kids' bicycle races. All right, B feature number one here for your Midwest Mods coming out on the track right now. Starting on the pole in the 43 is going to be Skyler Teague. On his outside in the 18P is going to be Shane Paxton. Row number two on the inside is going to be the 05 of Cheyenne Bauman on her outside in the 6T of Austin Treadway. Row number three on the inside will be the 7C of Derek Cook on his outside, the 84 of Dayton Newell. Row number four on the inside will be the 11 of Justin Yakko on his outside, the 21 of Mason Roden. Row number five on the inside will be Jacob Cater on his outside, the 5H of Austin Huntley in the starting 11th, the 48 of Zach Cheever. Green flag is in the air. It's Tyler Teagan out front. Oh, big contact, Justin Yakko. You got the 7C of Derek Cook in second, the 6T of Austin Trenway in third, one lap in. Lots of damage there to the 11 of Justin Yako as Cheyenne Bauman going around at turn number two. Skyward Teague off the pace there, losing two spots. But the Joker welding caution coming out for the 05 of Cheyenne Bauman. Skyler Teague spun it out in three and four, too. Top three will transfer into tonight's A main for the Norris Logging Power Eye Midwest Modifieds. B feature one of two as the 7C of Derek Cook is your leader. 6T of Austin Treadway in second. The 84 of Dayton Noel had some trouble in the heat race action and he's sitting there in that third and final transfer spot. Gonna be single file. Lights are off, gonna go green. This time, as the green flag is back in the air. Derek Cook gonna lead him down the front, stretch in on one and two, Treadway there on the high side, Newell there on the low there. Battle in first, that second spot, top three. Gonna transfer to tonight's main event as Cook trying to cook his way to the main event tonight. Down the front stretch, gonna lead a lap. Treadway sitting there in third. Good battle, Yakko there in the 21 battle. Little Mason Roden gonna get it battled out as the 05 of Cheyenne Bauman's gonna pull off the speedway as Cook's gonna come down the front stretch and get another lap in the books. Dayton Noel gaining ground there on the 7th seat of Darren Cook. As right now, Dayton Noel is in that top three positions, but looking to get another gain spot in the feature lineup as he's right there on the inside of the 7C of Derek Cook. All are shine by shine, getting Newell on the low side, ran into a little bit of a rough patch there down the back stretch, and here comes Newell on the throttle down into turn number three. Gonna overtake Cook, and here comes Cook back to the inside, coming out of turn number four. Trying to get there, not gonna happen. We got a new race leader. Down the front stretch they go, Dayton Newell out front, your new race leader is 7C of Derek Cook. In second, great, great job by Skyler Teague, spinning in four and pulling it down on the infield. We're still green flag racing. 
with Newell, your race leader. Cook right behind him and Austin Treadway there in the 16, that third and final transfer spot. Dayton Newell is down front. Two to three car wing lead on the seven C of Derek Cook. As White Flag is in the air one more time around. Newell, your race leader, Cook, trying to reel him in down the back stretch. Though the top three are going to transfer down the back stretch. Newell's going to go for the final time for me, feature number one. Coming out of turn number four for the final time, the 84, Dayton Newell. Brian Cook and Austin Treadway going to be your third and final transfer car. Justin Yakko on the outside looking in. So it's the 84 of Dayton Newell, the 7C of Derek Cook, and the 6T of Austin Treadway. He is your top three transfers into the ninth A feature. As we get ready now for B feature number two on the pole for this one, be the 42 of Trevor Elliamson. On his outside, be the 5C of Brian Cook. Row number two on the inside, be the 15R of Oakley Ragland. On his outside, be the 49 of Nick Farrell. Row number three on the inside will be the 87 of Aaron O'Dell. And on the outside will be a 77J of Frank Woods Cabbage. Row number four on the inside will be the 14 of Derek Collins. On his outside will be the 92 of Keith Cheevers. And row number five on the inside will be the 4C of Braden Connor. On his outside will be the 7W of Wesley Breedlove. Eight laps is your distance. Green flag is in the air for the B feature two for the Norris Logging Power I Midwest Modifieds. Down the back stretch, there goes your race leader Trevor Ellingson. Gonna lead early in this one, coming out of turn number four. Gonna be one lap in the books. Brian Cook right there. Frank West Cabbage though in the 77J. In that third and final transfer spot, the 49 of Nick Farrell trying to reel him in. Down the back stretch though, the 42 of Engelson. Trevor there in the 42 as West Cabbage going a little bit high there, trying to cross over on Cook down the front stretch. We got a battle here for a second between Cook and Frank West Cabbage in through one and two. Frank West Cabbage gonna smoke the infield tractor tire. And we got Breed Love going around and Frank West Cabbage there on a good run though. The 7W Wesley Breedlove going around there in turn number two. Joker welding caution flag is out on the speedway. Your race leader right now is the 42. Four, uh, it's been a long night, Shane. The 42. 42. 42. 42 of Trevor Ellingson. 5C of Brian Cook, and that third and final transfer spot right now is the 77J and Frank West Cabbage. Nick Farrell on the outside looking in right now. Lots of racing action still coming up. Still got two pure stock B features to work through. Kids, you might want to start making your way to the Green Gate if you want to participate in our kids' bicycle races. 
Once again, all kids, please go get those bicycles and make your way to the green gate. There behind the grandstands in chart number one. As you can see, the kids are starting to make their way with their bicycles. Down the front stretch, back to green flag race in action. Top three are going to transfer tonight. It's main event. Frank Westcap is there trying to get to the inside of Brian Cook again down the back chute. They're going to go. Eggleston, though, you still your race leader is starting to open up a good little run here again. We got another caution on the speedway. The 7W of Wesley Breedlove finding something slick over there in turn number two. You know. Talking about uh, precious memories and the team back together, you know, we, we, we and you came up with a name for turn number two. Tricky turn two, and it has definitely been tricky tonight. <laughs> Cars have been coming out a little squirrely out of there. Been a little bit of pure pandemonium. It's been fun, though. The turn number two has been entertaining tonight. It is, and not only are we going to see cars on the track tonight, we're also going to see bicycles on the track. Don't also forget about our 50-50 raffle going on for the Unforgotten Heroes Foundation. They got a little table set up down there below us. That was a second caution on the 7W of Wesley Breedlove. That will end his night. He needs to go to the pits. Your race leader, the 42 of Trevor Ellingson. Brian Cook there in second. Frank West Cabbage in that third and final transfer spot. Here we go, winds are off, getting ready to go back green. Green flag is in the air. Oh, Frank West Cabbage on a good jump to the inside of Cook. Trying to make a stick there on the low side. Here he can. Here comes Nick Farrell on the inside of Cook. Down into one and two, Elling, or three and four, sorry, Ellingson, still your race leader. I forgot which way I was looking. He's going to lead another lap. Ellington out front, the 42 year leader, the 77 W of Frank was Cabbage in second. And here comes the 5 C of Brian Cook there in that third spot. It's still Ellington out front. Ellington, senior race leader, still Frank West Cabbage trying to reel him in as your top three cars are spread out now. As Farrell was running that fourth spot, now got bumped out of that one, and he is now running towards the back of the pack. Ellingson still running strong, being a good run here for him. Frank West Cabbage moving up the track, trying to find a little bit of something there on the high side. Trevor Ellingson there out front, 77. Frank West Cabbage there in that second spot. Single foul right now, all the way around the mighty Lippin Midway Speedway. Derek Collins slow on the front stretch. And the 14 of Derek Collins bringing out the Joker welding caution. It'll be a green white checker. Lineup is good. Bumper to bumper, lights are going off. Back 
As the caution comes back out, piece of debris there in turn number four. But Clint, the man's got it. Is that a helmet? I think that was a helmet. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yep. That's something you don't see every day. Nope. That's an expensive piece of equipment not to be having on yourself. Just saying. Lights are off. We're going to go back green this time. Green, white, checkered, your top three going to tonight's main event. Elling Senior Race Leader. Down the back stretch, your top three still the same with Elling Senior West Cabbage and Cook. Coming out of turn number four, we're gonna see the one to go this time by Trevor Elling's in there in the 42. Frank West Cabbage going to the low side, trying to get a good run here. Down the back shoot, they're gonna go Ellingson. Into turn number four for the final time in B feature number two action. Coming out of turn number four, checkered flag's gonna come out for the 42 and Trevor Ellingson, Frank West Cabbage and Brian Cook. And Farrell on the outside looking in. All right, so the Midwest Modified B features in the books. As it will be the Pure Stock B features. So Pure Stock drummers will be making their way to the staging area. And guess who I saw a glimpse of? Who? The 34. No. Yeah. That's impressive. It is very impressive. What about that nice rollback there? That's a good looking truck. Yeah. So there he is. The 34, James Marinas. So we get ready for the McAdoodles Power Eye Pure Stocks. B feature number one. Here's how our B feature is going to line up for the number one of two for B features for your McAdoodles Power Eye Pure Stocks. Starting on the pole is going to be the 6 ER of Jeff Hilton on his outside, the 42X of Michael Neves. Run number two on the inside will be the 40 of Akola Harris on his outside, the 8K of Tyler Knudsen. Row number three, starting on the inside, will be the 42 of Adam Isaacs on his outside, the 6 of Corey Henson. And starting shotgun in row number four will be the 21 of Carson Groniger. We got a couple of drivers that are coming out from our B feature number two, scheduled for B feature number two, so they'll make their way back to the pits. But the sixer of Jeff Helton making his way out. So Jeff Helton out there, and we got the six, Corey Henson coming out. So 
We got the sixes on the track. See if anybody else makes the call. So once again, kids, you'd be making your way down towards turn number one to the green gate for our kids' bicycle races. Uh, it looks like they are getting ready to go down there in turn number one. Race fans, don't forget, later on tonight, when the key flat, the foreman, the flag man, comes <laughs> climbing down from that flag stand, you have your opportunity to take everyone pit side, go check out these cars, go meet the drivers and the crews of the teams that have been out here racing. So you, you do not want to miss that. It is going to be, it's an opportunity. It is a great opportunity to get to see some awesome behind the scenes looks at what happens in the pits at a racetrack. So definitely want to hang out for that. So since we got three cars in this B feature, we're going to go green, white, checkered. So they're going to race for their starting spots in the feature. Green flag is in the air. The six are there on a good start there. Hilton gonna start gapping the field here, going into turns three and four. Like I said, green, white, checker. So as he comes out of turn number four, he's gonna see the one to go sign. This is four starting spots for the A main. And the sixer of Jeff Hilton's out front in 21. Uh, Carson Kroniger in second. And the six of Corey Henson in third. Checkered flag in the air for the 6 ER of Jeff Helton. The 21 of Carson Groniger and the 6 of Corey Henson. All right, Pure Shock B feature number two is going to line up like this. Starting on the pole, the number four is going to be Dusty Rhodes. On his outside in the 22R, Colby Rathbone. Row number two, starting on the inside, will be the 42L of Levi Harris. On his outside, the 41 of Grogger Harris. Row number three, starting on the inside, will be the 17 of Austin Wilson. And race fans, look at this. On the outside of row number three in the L34, he flipped in his heat race, James Reedus. Good to see him come back out after taking a tumble off of turn number two off the back stretch wall there. Top three are going to transfer to the main event later on this evening.
All right, race fans. Three go to the main event. Six laps is going to be the distance. It is going to be a good one. Dusty Rhodes, Colby Rathbone there on the front row. James Reed is flipping it. It is heat race. Getting ready to go. Keith the flagman getting ready to get the green flag. And here we come. Down the front stretch. They're going to come rumbling. James Reed is quickly going to the high side of the track. Trying to punch his ticket in. Rathbone's right there. Reed is to the back bumper of Rhodes. He's going to be in that second spot right now. Running next to Rathbone. Rhodes right now. Your race leader getting ready to come out of turn number four. For lap number one is going to be in the books. Five more to go. Dusty Rhodes, your race leader, but here comes Redis on the high side, doing a little bit of hustle in there. Nothing sticking, Rhodes, still your race leader. James Redis there in the station wagon, going to slide through three and four. Rhodes holding on there on that low side. Rathbone in that third and final transfer spot. Got the 17 of Austin Wilson on his bumper as well, though we still got a battle for the lead. Rhodes and Redis. As Ro uh, Rhodes is going to bobble a little bit through three and four, but Redis does the same thing. It's drag racing down the front stretch as the laps are ticking down. Oh, Rhodes almost slides up into Redis. Redis has got a little bit of momentum on the high side. Coming into turn number three. R Redis on the high side. That's where he likes to run no matter where he runs at. Coming down the front stretch. Redis to the race lead. Rhodes holding on to second right now. The battle for the third and final transfer spot between Rathbone and Wilson is heating up. Coming through three. Coming down out of turn number four. One to go for James Redis. Coming out of turn number two. Redis, your race leader. Now the battle for the third and final transfer spot is going to heat up. Rathbone and Wilson going to start duking it out. Coming through turn number four for the final time for me. Feature action. James Redis is going to the main event. Dusty Road drag race at the line. Colby Rathbone going to get that one. All right, it is feature time here at the Mighty Women Midway Speedway. Welcome back from our intermission break. It was a fantastic break. Had a lot of great kids on the track. Got to give them some trophies, and the kids had a really, really good time. But it is now time for the Ozark Sporting Goods Power Eye Super Stock A feature. This is how they will roll out tonight. For the Tony Roper Memorial 2022 on the pole, he is your current track point leader. That's going to be the 56 of Mark Davis. On his outside, it's going to be the 31X of Tony Aglin. Row number two on the inside will be the 164 of Michael Muskrat. On his outside, it'll be the 1B, downtown Timmy Brown. Row number three on the inside will be the 7 of Josh Lewis. On his outside, it's going to be the 40 of Taylor Carver. Row number four on the inside will be 11 of Derek Brown on his outside. It'll be 05 of Dale Berry. Row number five on the inside will be 23 of Mark Simon on his outside. It'll be 21 W of Ted Walshmeyer. In row number six on the inside will be 83 of James Ellis on his outside. It'll be 32 of Jim Button. In row number seven, it's going to be a 32X of John Newell. Fifteen laps is your distance for the Ozark Sporting Goods Power Eye Super Stocks. We have had four rounds of racing for this class. Four different winners. Two weeks ago, it was the 1B of Tim Brown. Earlier tonight in heat race action, it was the 56 of Mark Davis in heat race number one. 
Heat race number two went to Tony Aglin, Michael Muskrat, Ted Walshmeyer, top two in the national point standings in the Power Eye Super Stocks. Kitten, we have done our parts. We have uh, waited for this all night long. It is feature time. 100% racing from here on out. Time to make some money for these drivers trying to go to Victory Lane tonight. Remax Next Generation Victory Lane. Coming to the line, lights will be going off. Race fans, we've waited all night for this. Our first A feature of the Tony Roper Memorial 2022. You fans have stuck around for some great feature racing. These drivers are getting ready to let her, let her rip. The horsepower getting ready to be shown tonight. Race fans, it's the Tony Roper Memorial Ozark Sporting Goods Power Eye Super Stock A feature. Green flag is in the air. Quick jump to the lead by the 31 x of Tony Anglin down the back stretch, but here comes Mark Davis to the inside. Gonna give him a good run down the back stretch. You're gonna bump and bang into turn number three. Here comes, woo wee. Holy smokes, coming into turn number four. Lap number one's gonna go to the 56 of Davis. 56 of Mark Davis out front. Tony Anglin in a 31 in second. The one being downtown. Timmy Brown in that third spot. Good racing there in the middle of the back of the pack as Davis will come around here for lap number two. The 40 of Taylor Carver working up to that third spot. Davis though still your race leader angling there but here comes the 40 of Carver. Carver on a mission early here in the in the race coming out of turn number four. Look at the inside of Aglin coming out of four as there is a cluster of cars behind our top three leaders. Okay. Race in the middle of the pack here between the 1B of Timmy Brown and the 05 of Del Berry, the 21 and 10 Walshmeyer all right there. But what about that race there for that second spot? Carver pulls in front of Aglin. Aglin now on the inside. They're crossing positions at Ag the line. Aglin holding on. Carver doing everything he can. Slid up into turn number th two. Aglin down the back stretch. has got a little bit of a lead now going into three. Davis Steele, your race leader. Carver to the back bumper of Aglin coming out of turn number four. Going to cross over there, but it's not going to stick. And the battle for second rages. Still Davis out front. Carver now on the inside of Aglin. Carver now takes over that second spot. We'll see how turns three and four turns out right now. Davis is hoping they race each other all the time they can because he can gain more on the lead. Don't look now with the 21W, Ted Welshmeyer's working his way up to the field. He's now behind the 11 of Derek Brown there in the fourth spot, but he's gonna have to bobble, bobbles it going into turn three. He's off the power on the top of turn four. Ted Walshmeyer off the pace there, coming down the front stretch for Staten Green. As it's still the 56 of Mark Davis out front. The 40 though of Taylor Carver is gaining ground on the 56 machine. Jim Button, the 32, trying to stay on the lead lap. We'll see how turn three and four goes, but that 40 of Carver is gaining on the 56 as Mark Davis comes down the front stretch. Mark Davis navigating the lap traffic easily. Carver getting down on the low side. Great job by the lap driver going to the high side and letting the guys run around him. Davis putting on a lead now, coming out of turn number four. Aglin still hanging all over the back bumper of Tyler Carver. Carver is closing the gap. Who will finish striking distance. Davis has pretty much controlled this race, but Carver is coming in late. Does he have enough time to come out of turn number four? We are 11 laps in the 15 lap feature. Down the back stretch, your race leader's gonna go. And now we got a battle going on for third between Derek Brown and Tony Aglin as they're gonna start duking it out there for that third spot. But Carver right now, closing the gap, running a little bit higher of a line than Mark Davis, coming out of turn number two. We're gonna have a battle for the race lead as Carver has closed the gap. As we look down and they go into turn number three, Mark Davis, your race leader, Carver gonna come down on the inside. Down the front stretch, we got a battle for the lead with a few laps to go. Two more laps to go, four races, four different winners. This is the fifth race, this is the fifth round. Can Mark Davis be our first repeat winner? 
or Taylor Carver looking to do the upset as Davis has pretty much controlled this race. White flag is in the air. Kitten Blackburn's gonna finish to the Mark Davis to the inside of one and two. Carver right there on the back bumper. Down the back chute, he's gonna go. Davis has got a car length lead going into turn number three. Coming on a lap traffic. Here comes Carver to the inside of Davis. Coming into turn number four, it's gonna be a drag race at the line. Davis is gonna hold him off and go to victory lane for the first time tonight. Wow, what a finish there. Taylor Carver was coming in late. Mark Davis went up the track there in turns three and four, opened the door for Carver, but Carver ran out of room as the 56 of Mark Davis, our current track point leader. He won on week number one, opening night. In round number five, he will make his second appearance to the next Remax Next Generation Victory Lane in the Ozark Sporting Goods, Power Eye Super Sox, Ozark Sporting Goods with their new location on Evergreen Parkway. And there you have it, folks, the 56 of Mark Davis. Joker welding on the side of the 56 machine. He's taking off the safety equipment. Being greeted there. What a great finish there for the 56 on a big night for the Tony Roper Memorial, our first feature winner of the night, the 56 of Mark Davis. So congratulations to Mark Davis, the 56. They continue to celebrate down there to the Remax Next Generation Victory Lane. Big win there for Mark Davis. Who got a heat race win and got the feature win. He swept the night at the Tony Roper Memorial. As we get ready now for the added money, Power Eye, Norris Logging, Midwest Modified A feature. This is how they will roll out on the pole. It'll be the 15 of Trent Wynn on his outside. It'll be the 64 of Pete Richardson. Row number two, starting on the inside, will be the 59 of Rob Muhlenberg on his outside. The 14D of Derek the Madman Davis. Row number three on the inside is going to be the Godfather, the 83 of Scott Campbell on his outside. It'll be the 45 of Colt Cheevers. Row number four starting on the inside will be the 33 of Anthony Sliders Ferreira. And on his outside, the 28L of Brandon Lyons. Row number five on the inside will be the 33X of Steve Hulenberg. Already a feature winner this season. On his outside, it's going to be the 38 of Ian Morrison. Row number six, starting on the inside, will be the 68 of Donnie Betts. On his outside, the 28 of Wesley Briggs. Row number seven on the inside, will be the 32, Smoking Joe Francis. On his outside, it'll be the 25 of Billy Jones. Row number eight on the inside, will be the 84 of Dayton Newell. On his outside, the 42 of Trevor Ellingson. Row number nine on the inside, will be the 7C of Derek Cook. Came from the B, featured on his outside, will be the 77J. Frank was cabbage, also a transfer from the B feature. And row number 10 on the inside will be the 6T of Austin Treadway. On his outside, the 5C of Brian Cook. Kitten, 20 laps is your distance. $750 to win, 70 to at least start. But that is a payout tonight. They also got a lottery spot tonight as well. The feature winner will draw a peel for that lottery spot. Twenty laps gonna be the distance right here. Trent Ruan, Pete Richardson on the front road, Rob Muhlenberg, Derek Davis. There are some heavy hitters in this race right here. Peter Richardson, no stranger to victory lane.
Trent Wynn, Pete Richardson on the front row, gonna pace him down the back stretch. Keith the flag man gonna do his little jig. Getting ready to go green flag it, here we go. Midwest modified, $750 on the line tonight. Trent Wynn off to a great start there. Look at the 14 though with Derek Davis on the outside. Derek Davis there battling with the 64. Pete Richardson, Pete Richardson, your current point leader. But Wynn will take lap number one. Trent Wynn, your race leader, Derek Davis, Peter Richardson is starting to do it. Now here comes Colt 45, Colt Cheevers there in the fourth spot, bringing Rob Muhlenberg with him as Trent Wynn starting to check out here early with Richardson and Davis still battling out for that second spot as they come to the line with another lap in the books. Still Trent Wynn out front. The 64 of Pete Richardson battling with the 14 of Davis. A lot of cars are starting to use that top side. Davis is using the top side, you make it stick there as he is gaining on the 15 of Wynn. Down the front stretch they go. They don't call the madman Derek Davis for nothing. He likes a little bit of high side hustling and he's gonna start doing it. Down the back stretch, he's got a good little run going on, but Trent Wynn but got a little bit more momentum down the back stretch as they go into three and four. Richardson and Cheevers now gonna start duking it out side by side. They're gonna come to the stripe. Cole Chambers battling there with the current point leader in the track standings and the national point standings. Cole Chambers moves up that third spot now, but the gap is closing between Lynn and Davis. You look at the Godfather there racing with the other Ozarks Racers Hall of Famer to 59 of Rob Muhlenberg. Scott Campbell doing a little bit of patiently running the catfish side on the low side right now. Picking cars off one by one. Trent Wynn though, still can't really open a lead on Davis. Down out of turn number four, Trent Wynn's gonna lead another one, but Davis and Cheevers gaining. Right now, pretty clean racing so far. Trent Wynn holding on to that top spot. Derek Davis right there, sitting there in second. The 45 of Colt Cheevers right there in third. We've got racing all over the place, many different grooves. When they come out of turn number four, they're higher than normal as Davis is getting a good run there on the high side of turn number two, almost to the back bumper of the 15 to win. Colt Chambers is right there as we got Cook coming to the slow stop here. Ooh. I don't know about you, kid, but we needed a little break right there with all that uh, race yeah. action the going on. The 7C there of Derek Cook. It was a slicing and dicing there. There was quite a bit of action going on there. Uh, Trent Wynn has not been able to pull away from Derek Davis there in the 14. And Davis is running a little higher than everybody else on the speedway right now. This restart is going to be very crucial because you got Trent Wynn, Derek Davis, Colt Cheevers, Pete Richardson, Brandon Lyons, and 83 is Scott Campbell. <laughs> They were had a big run right there. So we got seven laps in. So a flat tire on the seven C of Derek Cook, but good to see a good field of Midwest modified drivers here tonight. Seven hundred and fifty to win. You bet every penny that a lot of Midwest drivers would be here tonight. Over 35 on hand with us tonight. And I tell you what, every single one of these cars is I had to earn their way onto this track for the main event tonight. Trent Wynn right now though, putting a little clinic on, running the low line with Derek Davis there in the 14D running that high side. Cole Cheevers has been up there too. Pete Richardson running good. Brandon Lyons and Scott Campbell, Rob Muhlenberg, Anthony Ferreira right there as well. And don't forget Steve Muhlenberg right there in the 33. Kitten, if you ask me the question, who would I pick? It's up in the air right now because our top five is stacked with any of those drivers with the potential of winning this race. It's the Tony Roper Memorial. You bet every dollar it's going to be a barn burner, especially with how great this track is. With all the work that they put in throughout the week, thanks to Rogers Dirt Works LLC. As they are doubling them up, the 15 of Trent win. Looking good. The 
question is though, can Derek Davis get that top side worked in in a quick time? So a lot of times it takes a couple of laps to get that momentum built on that top side, but we'll see if he can get it done in a short time. Well, he's got a few drivers that have been following him to the high side. Colt Chevers is one of those drivers that have been going up there as well. Same thing with Lions. So if you get a few cars up there working that high line, it'll come in very nicely. It's like the Daytona 500. You got to team up with somebody to go up there on the high side with you. Who's <laughs> going to work it in? As we go back, green flag racing. Trent Wynn's going to lead him down the front oh. stretch. And we got a collection down in turn number four between Frank West Cabbage and one. We got pure pandemonium in turn four and turn one. Well, they did so good on the start. Had a pretty good run, but not restart. Was a little bit rough. We got two cars in turn number four. Ellingson and Frank West Cabbage there in turn number four. And the 84 of Dayton Newell, poor guy, he can't catch a break tonight. He was involved in a heat race caution and had to work his way through the B feature. And now he's collected with the 59 of Ron Muhlenberg and the 32 of Joe Francis over there as well. Frank West Cabbage makes a hard exit out of turn number one, heading into the pits. As Midwest Sheet Metal instant replay right here. Shane, walk us through this one, because it was uh, it was a little nuts. You can see there, a little, the start was a little bit rough. It kind of piled up there, and then that happened in turn number four, and then we had a pile up in turn number one. Brandon Lyons just goes to the pits, and he's been mixing it up in the front row. We talked earlier about where we are at here uh, at the in the uh, booth here up here on the top and it feels like you know we're like playing like a cars you know like how kids play cars in the dirt it looks like this is us because it looks like this is a table view and we got a great view of the whole track this is this is the bird's eye view this is like the perfect seat at a super bowl this would cost you like thousands of dollars like 52,000 I think is what it was <laughs> speaking of Super Bowls I bet my Dallas Cowboy is going to get there this season <laughs> you said that last year too and what <laughs> happened is uh they didn't do nothing yeah I know I always got to have hope right well, at least you got something. I just turned 28 years old. I've never watched him play in the Super Bowl. How do you think I felt as a Chiefs <laughs> fan for all those years? So good to see some of those cars involved in the caution able to continue on. The 42 and Trevor Ellingson, though see if he can be able to continue on. He had a lot of damage there to that right side. Oh, he's got her fired back up down the front stretch. Let's see if he makes the hard, keeps her straight, or if he turns, and he's going to stay on the track. Our buddy Thomas was down there live on his uh, Facebook page, showing me dirt videos, and uh, he caught me walking up with these funnel fries that we got here, funnel cake fries, and he asked me if I waited in line for him. I told him, yeah. You, you know what's funny is, uh, <laughs> you know, my, my few times out here last year, uh, my favorite thing in the concession stand is these funnel cake fries. <laughs> I absolutely love them. Uh, they, are, they are the greatest thing ever invented, and this track pulls them off fantastically. So if you got an opportunity to get the funnel cake fries, highly recommend it. But if you're watching on showmedirt.tv, you need to come here and experience the racing, and you need to experience the funnel cake fries. Trust me, I'm over 350 <laughs> pounds. I know what I'm talking about when it comes to food. And, hey, our walking tacos are pretty good, too. They got the big bag. It's not like the little bag. It's the big bag. It, everything is big here yep. when it comes to food. Portion-wise, yep. Especially those announcers. They're pretty big, too. <laughs> but I, I get a good <laughs> workout running up and down the stairs, so. That's it. it. We get a bird's eye view, but we have to work for it to get up here. <laughs> this is true. That's why I got to take a deep breath or two before we get rocking and rolling again. Well, looks like the track is 
but everybody below us down there in the Lowe's Home Improvement VIP Suites got a pretty good view as well. So Man, they do. It's, it is rocking down in there. That is a great view. If you got an opportunity to watch a race in style and comfort, that's the way to do it. There's not really a bad seat in this place. There, There is not. You know, I got here early, was able to walk around the track. You know, the, you, you can see the whole track from anywhere in this place. You know, you don't have any blind spots as a fan, which is which is great. Yep. And all the people there on the pit side there watching. We had a full grandstand, full pits. It has been a great night. Right after this feature is going to be the Dirt Track Bank Cash Money Late Model Series Midwest Sheet Metal Feature. We talked about it, you know, tomorrow is a national holiday. We still got a pretty good crowd on hand. You get over 100 cars in the pits, and you know it will be a pretty long night. But so far, 1043 in feature race in action, not too bad, especially with all the things that we had to do tonight. Man, I tell you what, it's phenomenal. I'd rather be, there's nowhere else I'd rather be on a Sunday night on Memorial Weekend. You know, I'm a big fisherman on my free time, but right now I would much rather be right here with some of the best fans in the land right here at Midway Speedway getting out and some Roper Memorial action out here as uh, Frank West Cabbage just makes his way back on the track. And if you're watching and don't live in the area, you can come join us on a Friday night and within 15 minutes it's been at Spring State Park. You can spend the weekend down here at Bennett Springs State Park, enjoy the races on Friday night, spend Saturday and Sunday at the State Park there at Bennett Springs. Trent wins your race leader. Gonna get bumper to bumper, getting ready to go back to green flag action. Lights are off, little go green flag race, and it's back in the air. Here we come, Trent Wynn down the front stretch. Pete Richardson on a good jump there on the inside. He's gonna be on the inside of Davis. Is Davis still gonna run a little bit of high as Ferreira gets a little sideways at a turn number two? But it's going to keep it straight, Trent Wynn, though. Your range leader coming through turn number four. Richardson to the inside of Davis. Down the front stretch. We're back at it. Trent Wynn out front still. Derek Davis in the 14 in second. The 64, Pete Richardson in third. What about that race back there for that top five finish spot? Between the 33 of Steve Muhlenberg and the 33 of Anthony Ferreira. Oh, caution on the speedway. Four. Four to 68, uh, Donnie Benz. Boy is. We got nine laps in. As the 15 of Trent win is still your leader to 14 of Derek Davis in second. 64 of Pete Richardson in third. Once again, we thank the Unforgotten Heroes Foundation for being here tonight. As our 50 50 raffle winner was also the winner of the bicycle race. So, boy, and he won that thing by a country mile. I don't think he was old enough to go to the casino, but if he was, he would probably want to go tonight. If I was a gambling man, I would have. <laughs> so the fifth and nine of Rom Muhlenberg getting to shoot there in turn number three.
right, we're gonna get them bumper to bumper, get back to green flag race and action lights are gonna go off. Trent Wynn, Derek Davis, Peter Richardson, Scott Campbell. Your top four right now. Looking to go for the green flag as they're getting ready to come through three and four right about now. Here they go, Trent Wynn's gonna bring them down the front stretch. Davis, a little slow on that start. Trent got a great restart, but Davis gonna go back to the little bit of the higher side. Through one and two, here comes Peter Richardson, Scott Campbell. As they're moving and shaking through the whole field. Coming down the front stretch, Trent Wynn still your race leader. Davis still working that high side, but he's got a front, front end looks like it's kind of coming off the ground there on the 14 as Ferreira got sideways at a turn number two, and he is off the pace. It looks like he's gonna try to limp around on the high side, Anthony Ferreira there. But as the race is going, as Richardson still on the high side, on the low side of Davis trying to get there as Ferrero looks like he might have a flat or something and he's gonna make it off the track as the leader of Trent Wynn's gonna come down the front stretch and Richardson and Davis got a battle. Peter Richardson gonna take that second spot. They're gonna start battling slide. Pete Richardson slides up, gonna open the door on the low side for the Godfather, Scott Campbell. Down the match stretch, that battle for second is a three car battle. Campbell's gonna drive in hard on Peter Richardson. Davis has moved to the low side of the speedway down the back front stretch, here they come. Trent Wynn right now, still your race leader. Derek Davis, Peter Richardson, Scott Campbell right there. Campbell's got a little bit of a lead. Coming out on the 64 of Peter Richardson. Campbell up to that third spot, doing a little bit of moving and shaking. Trent Wynn's loving the battle behind him because he can start pulling away. Derek Davis, your race leader, Scott Campbell to third. Trent Wynn out front, Derek Davis still working that high side, but what about that race for that third spot? The Godfather, Scott Campbell, hold on that third spot, but the race behind him for fourth. It is heated up between Steve Muhlenberg in the 33 and the 64, Pete Richardson on his outside. Trent Wynn still bringing him down the back stretch, still your race leader. Scott Campbell closing the gap on the 14 of Derek the Madman Davis as they come out of turn number four. Scott Campbell's inching ever closer to that second spot as laps keep ticking down 16 in the books. 16 laps in the books, that's it, it's still Trent Wynn out front in the 14 of Derek Davis in second, the 83 of Scott Campbell in that third spot. As it's still Wynn, Davis, here comes Campbell closing the gap there on the 14. Trent Wynn getting ready to come up on lap traffic, this is gonna be the 60 of Austin Treadway as Derek Davis has his hands full with the 83 of Scott Campbell for that second position. But here comes Steve Muhlenberg to the inside of the 83 down the back shoot. They're gonna go as Trent Wynn's getting ready to come out of turn number four. White flag is in the air one more time around. Trouble turn number one and oh, two. Oh no. <laughs> Frank West Cabbage goes high off of one and two there in the 77 as he was making a move around Brian Cook there in the 5C, got a little loose and spun up the side of the track. <laughs> I love this little uh, situation here. If there's ever a time to have a caution in a race. I always say this, this is my saying, you know when you're watching American Idol and they're getting ready to announce the winner and then they're like, let's go to a commercial break. And they go to a commercial break, we're getting ready to get the winner 15 of Trent Wynn had his big lead, but no, 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 no. Not just yet. The Joker welding caution flag comes out and changes everything. Frank West Cabbage, a lot of damage to the body of the 77J there, worked his way through the B. He will tag to the rear of the field. Right now, Trent Wynn has been checked out in total control right now. But Derek Davis has been chomping at the bit, but Scott Campbell has slowly moved his way up to the third position and has been giving Davis a run for his money. So this green-white checkered is about to get interesting. And he's sitting next to us. Bumper to bumper. Race director Ronnie Williams telling him bumper to bumper. Lights are off. Green next time.
Here we go. Lights are off. Can Trent win? Hold on. As the green flag is in the air. Trent Wynn going to lead him down into one and two. Derek Davis still on that high side. Scott Campbell got a good grip there in turn number two down the back shoot. Trent Wynn just going to keep pulling away. Here comes Derek Davis. Race fans, it's getting ready to see the one to go. Race. It's going to be checkers or wreckers time. White flag is in the air one more time around. Trent Wynn just has to hold on, hold on to the lead as the 14 of Derek Davis running out of time and space. As Wynn goes into turn three and four, out of four, he will see the checker flag in the air as he will get the Norris logging Power I Midwest mean Modified A feature win. Derek Davis coming home second. The 83 is Scott Campbell third. The 33 is C. Muhlenberg fourth. The 64, Pete Richardson coming home fifth. Pumping his fist down the front stretch as he came across the line. Trent Wynn is excited for this one. Seven hundred and fifty to win. He will also draw a chip for a lottery spot to one of these lucky drivers. But what a run there for the fifteen of Trent Win. as he makes his way down to the Remax Next Generation Victory Lane. His little daughter is gonna go down there and join his, her daddy. What a win. 66 trusts added the money. And when it is on the side of that 15 of Trent Win. As the family down there celebrating with Trent as he had a heck of a run. A lot of drivers behind him. Race fans, let him hear you. Your Power Eye Midwest Modified feature winner, the 15 of Trent win. All right, they will continue to celebrate down there in the Remax Next Generation Victory Lane, but Kitten, it's your time to shine and get these fans rallied up and loud for our next feature. All right, race fans, get ready to roll on the track for their main event. It's time for the Cash Money Late Model Series presented by Bud's Tire and Wheel. And this is how they're going to line up for tonight's main event. Starting on the pole, your current points leader, the 52 of Mitch Keeter. On his outside, in the 82, Jace Parmley. Row number two on the inside is going to be the 33 of Mike Bittner on his outside, the XR11 of Sean Duncan. Row number three on the inside will be the 4A of Dustin Atkinson on his outside, the 16 of Rick Brown. Row number four on the inside will be the 42 of Dustin Mooneyham on his outside, the 67 of Jammin' Jimmy Van Zandt. Row number five, your current rookie points leader is the 50P of Justin Parrish. On his outside will be the 13 of Sean Whitman. Row number six on the inside will be the 73 of Francisco Escamilla. On his outside, the 29 of Chandler Mooning. Row number seven on the inside will be the 2060 of Jonathan Dean. On his outside, the 23 of Mark Simon. Row number eight on the inside will be the 26 of Glenn Powell. On his outside, the 662 of Caden Campbell. Row number nine on the inside will be the 16E of Sean Eggman. On his outside, the double zero of Landon Harris. And starting shotgun in row number 10, the 5JR of Noah Ames. Oh. 
That's how they're going to line up for tonight's main event for your Cash Money Late Model Series. Presented by Bud's Tire and Wheel. They're going to wave to you fans right now. Go ahead and wave back. They're going to see it. All right, race fans, get ready to get on your feet. They're going to do a four-wide salute for you. One of the greatest things in motorsports right here. It is a thank you to you fans for coming out and supporting them. This is their way to show appreciation to you for coming out. So getting ready to come out of the force midway on Get your, your feet. feet. Coming out of turn number four, you one of the best. You got them for a breast. Your cars and stars, the best drivers in the Midwest. Your cash money dirt late model series presented by Budge Tire and Wheel. Limited Midway Speedway fans, they're going to come around one more time. Show them how we do it here at the Body Midway Speedway. Throw those hats up in the air. Throw your hands up in the air. Make some noise for the Cash Money Late Model Series. I'm going to do it again. Coming out of turn number four. Race fans, you one of the best. You got them for a breast. The best drivers in the Midwest. The stars and cars of your cash money dirt late model series presented by Bud's Tire and Wheel. Feel the rumble of the ponies under the hoods as they get ready to rock and roll for their main event tonight. 30 laps is going to be the distance. Mitch Kit Keeter, your current points leader there with the green spoiler. Kitten, I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm at a gym. Get ready to know bench press. No, the uh, the world record bench press right now, you know? Oh, man, the, the, <laughs> the adrenaline I got going right now for this feature, I... Uh, I normally sit down throughout the night, but I am up pacing around. The flags are taking off the cars. Great job, youth race fans. I know your those drivers appreciate it. They tell me all the time how much they can hear you scream and yell. Even when they're going full speed, they can hear you race fans getting after it. So get loud and rowdy tonight for your Cash Money Late Model Series. Mitch Keeter, your current points leader on the pole. Getting her ready to do battle with the 82 of Chase Parmley right there. Every position right here is key for their points battles. Coming up, Mike Bittner, Bittner and Sean Duncan there in row number two. Dustin Atkinson and Rick Brown, row number three. Gonna get them lined back up. They're gonna come at a turn number four. Their lights are gonna go off and they're gonna go green flag racing this next time by. It is a good racetrack tonight. Clinton crew did a phenomenal job. We're going to see some high side hustling early with these guys. They like to get into the top side quick. Who's going to get there first? Who's going to be the first one to dance with the devil on the high side? Keter Parmley going to pace them down the back stretch. Lights are off. Looking for the green flag race fans. You're not going to need your seat. You might as well just stand on your feet for this one. Keith, the flag man, open the flag stand, getting ready to do his little jig. As the field enters turn number three, looking for the green flag, in here we go. Mitch Keener off to a great start. Parmley and Bittner right behind him as they go flying into turn number one. Mike Bittner looking at the inside of Parmley. Everyone jockeying and jiving for position as Mitch Keener is going to start pulling away. But here comes Parmley on the low side with Bittner. Coming right behind him, Keeter's going to lead lap number one, 29 to go. As we are three wide, Simon going to be the first one towards the back of the pack to go to the high side. But Keeter got it figured out early. He got that whole shot, got to the low line, and it's sticking, and here he comes. Your current points leader got the drone following him. Parmley and Bentner starting to pull away. 
Sean Duncan there and Atkinson to Dustin Mooneyham there in the 42, trying to work his way up in there. Got a little bit of a battle between Atkinson and Duncan right now. The battle for fourth as they come down into one and two. Noah Ames a little bit off the pace. He's gonna be a little bit of lap traffic as Atkinson to the inside of the 11 of Sean Duncan. They're side by side going into turn number three, battling for that fourth spot. Caution on the speedway. That's the 26D of Jonathan Dean going around there in turn number two. Three laps in the book for the 30 lap main event. That's the 26D of Jonathan Dean that going around there in turn number two. Going to bring out the Joker welding caution flag for the first time tonight for your Cash Money Late Model Series. Chase Parmley picking his lane here on the Delaware double foul restart. Bittner going to the high shot. Everyone's going to fill in behind them. Watch how quickly these guys are going to get lined up. They're ready and rocking and ready to go. Next time by the green flag is going to be back in the air. Mitch Keeter, your race leader. Jace Parmley, Mike Mentner, Sean Duncan, Atkinson right there. Your first three rows. Down the back stretch, Mitch Keeter going to lead them. Looking for the green flag. If you watch the flag, man, he's going to do his little jig. Hits his staple. Keeter going to be looking for the green flag. Coming out of turn number four, and we are back at it. Here with your Cash Money Late Model Series presented by Bud's Tire Wheel down the front stretch. We're going to go three wide along the front stretch. Dustin Mooneyham shaking and grooving all the way up around the 11 of Duncan. Moving his way up to the four spot, but here comes the 67. Jimmy Van Zandt working his way up there, trying to get around the 11 of Duncan. Mitch Keeter still your race leader right now. Jace Parmley trying to find a little bit of a lane as Mooneyham getting to the back bumper of Bittner there into turn number two, but nothing happening yet. Keeter still your race leader coming out of turn number four. We're going to get another lap in the books. Mitch Keeter right now has led every lap of this one. James Parmley doing everything he can to try to reel in the 52, but there's just a lot of open track in front of him. We get some green flag action and see how he handles some lap traffic. That can make this race two different races, the race within the race. Keeter coming on the back of Noah Ames and is going to be the first car to go one lap down, but here comes the rest of the field. Noah Ames going to cut down right in front of Bentner on the low side. Keeter still running away with this one early as Mooneyham still trying to reel in the 33 of Bentner as they come into three and four. Keeter still going to lead another one as we got eight laps in the book right now for Mitch Keeter. As Parmley and oh, Mooneyham gets into Bentner and almost spins in turn number two. But it, they keep it going straight, and we got one. Oh, Parrish, Simon, and Escamilla. Parrish, Simon, and Escamilla got together there. Going to bring out the Joker welding caution. Escamilla kept trying to go. Mark Simon's out of his car. Twenty-three of Mark Simon not happy with how that one shaked out there. Mitch Keeter, your race leader. Hey Shane, man, what do you think of this one so far? You know it's been the Keeter show, but you know that eighty-two having a good run. I think he might be saving a little bit there for for the end there, but so far. I I was getting ready to see, you know, like a Sunday night smackdown on the backstretch there, especially for those fans over there in the pit side. But, you know, I think a lot of drivers right now are just sitting there waiting patiently, you know, running 
lap after lap, but you know, that 82 machine right there, pretty quick. There in the 33 there, Mike Bittner. But, you know, Keeter's been in control of this race, the whole race, but don't count out that 82 of Chase Prumlin. Yeah, having a good run there. But it's anybody's race, I believe. Right now, yeah, if we, you know, it was getting interesting getting into some lap traffic. It was going to slow the leader up and let the field come to him. And it's going to be a little interesting how it's going to shake out. If we run a few laps, caution, few laps, caution, it'll be the Mitch Keeter show. Parmley there picking a low side here for the Delaware double file restart. Escamilla there coming down the front stretch. Some damage on the front end there as Mark Simon's getting pushed pit side. His night is done for the 23. Mitch Keeter going to lead them out of one and two. Looking to go green, flag racing action this next time by. We got eight laps in the book. Hey, keep your eye on that 67. We've been talking about him all night. He's been looking for a good run. Mitch Keeter looking for the green flag, and we're back at it with the cash money lane models down the front stretch. Keeter on a good start. Bender trying to cross over, nothing doing there, but Atkinson going on the high side. Van Zandt there, we're going to be three wide coming down the back stretch. Van Zandt, Atkinson, and Bittner right there. Jimmy Van Zandt in the 67 going in hard on Bittner. As right now, that battle is going on for third, but Mitch Keeter still your race leader. Chase Parmley doing what he can to try to stay with him. Van Zandt getting around there. Bittner a little wobbly out of turn number two, but here comes Atkinson to the big inside of Van Zandt through three and four. Man, the battle right now for third, fourth, and fifth is one to watch. Jim and Jimmy Van Zandt trying to get the inside of the 33 of Bittner as the 52 of Mitch Keeter has already caught the back of the 5JR of Noah Ames. Coming out of turn number four, he's going to get around the lap traffic. Parmley's going to get around him as they come into one and two. Noah Ames trying to do a crossover move as a lapped car, but here comes Van Zandt to the inside of Bittner. 67 of Jimmy Van Zandt having a good solid run right here tonight here in Midway. But Mitch Keeter, it's been the 52 show from the drop of the green flag. Mike Bentner there in third, Jimmy Van Zandt, Atkinson. We got a kill. Caution on the speedway. Got debris off of turn number one. 12 laps in the books. Again, Mitch Keeter, still your race leader. Parmley trying to run him down. But Mike Bittner and Jimmy Van Zant have had one heck of a battle. Yeah, we talked to Jimmy before the races, and he's been he's top in the top, I think, top five in the point standings. He's just looking for some good runs, and uh, having a good run out 67. But yeah, and that and that's the thing. He's been consistent. He just hasn't been able to to park it in victory lane, you know. And, and he's he's I think sitting eighth in points right now. You know, he, he said, hey, I'm in top 10 in points. I'm happy with that. He's, he said he's never been there uh, with, the, with the series. So he, he's happy where he's sitting right now, but there's always room for improvement. So right now, the way the 67's going, he's a man on a mission right now, looking to go to VP Racing Fuel's victory lane tonight here at Midway Speedway. But, you know, for me as myself, you know, the voice here at the Mighty Midway Speedway, I gotta put my bets there on that four of Dusty Atkinson. The home track man right there, putting on a great show. Top five spot right now for him. He is our current track point leader in the late model class as we run our cash money late model rules here weekly. So we got some local guys up front. 
to mention Jimmy Van Zapp for you Lebanon fans that went over on I-44 on Saturday nights. He ran a lot of years over there, the 4A of Dustin Atkinson. He started his career at I-44, and then they have made their way over to the dirt service here at the Monty Midway Speedway. All right, going to the back stretch. Keeter's going to lead him looking for the green flag. Keith's going to do his jig one more time. Here we come out of turn number four. Keeter's going to come flying. Parmley right behind him. Van Zant to the inside of Bender and to one and two. Van Zant's going to hold on for dear life. Big contact. The 26 of Glenn Powell going around there in one and two. And that's also going to collect the 662 of Caden Campbell in the 16E of Sean Eggman. We'll watch it here on the instant replay and them two side up the track there and Midwest Sheet Metal instant replay right here. And 26 there got pushed around the 66 nowhere to go and then there the 16. Good, good break work there by uh, Eggman there, getting on that one. He about just backed into the door panel there of uh, of the 662 there. And it's just, you know, this is one of those ones where we talked about if, if Keeter could get into some traffic, it could shake the race up. It seems like his car's just a little bit faster than 82 of Parmley right now. Van Zant and Ventner has been putting on a heck of a battle. Gonna do a single file restart. Mitch Keeter's gonna be on the pole. Jace Parmley, Mike Mentor, Jimmy Van Zant, Dustin Atkinson, your top five as they sit right now. Caution is still out on the speedway. Been a great race so far. Drivers are trying different things. This next time by, they're gonna come back to green flag racing. 12 laps in the books on a 30 lap main event. They're sitting in sixth. Parrish, your rookie points leader and the orange spoiler. Justin Parrish there in sixth. Got some work to do if he wants to drive his car to the front. Looking for the green flag. Here comes Mitch Keeter getting ready to look for the green flag to be dropped and here they come. Down the front stretch, single file. They're gonna go into one and two. Keeter, Parmley, Parmley right there. Got Parmley got a good run there. But Keeter's gonna pull away by a car length down the back stretch. Van Zandt to the inside of Bittner. Gonna slide into three and four. Jim and Jimmy Van Scotchen on the speedway. Glenn Powell around in turn number two. You know when Glenn Powell's night's over, that's his second cause caution. He's going to park it in the infield. All right, we're going to keep him single file. Going to go green flag this next time by Keeter, Parmley, Van Zant, Mittner, Atkinson, your top five. I'm liking, liking the 67 of Jimmy's Van Zant's odds right now. He's getting in there, getting low, getting a good run out of the corners. But right now, Mitch Keeter's doing his thing and leading the distance so far. Here we come out of turn number four. Green flags back in the air. Here comes the field down into turn number one. Parmley, Parmley got a good bump and run right there. Keeter, who knows, it could be tires going on right now. Here comes Parmley again to the back bumper of the 52 of Keeter. We got a race for the lead coming down the front stretch. Into one, Jace Parmley trying to get right back, stay right back on the back bumper there of the 52 of Keeter. Keeter's gonna pull away by about a car length. Coming into three and four, here comes Van Zant, Mittner, and Atkinson. All right, 52. Keeter still your race leader. Parmley still right there. Van Zant, here comes Atkinson to the inside of Bittner as Ames 
get is right in front of your leader. Lap traffic becoming a huge problem. This end of the back of Parmley. Ames is all over the track and the drivers don't know which way to go. Ames is about three laps down at this point. Coming down the front stretch though, Mitch Keeter still your race leader. And that's gonna hold on right now as he was able to open up some of the lead. Mitch Keeter, your race leaders. More lap traffic getting ready to be coming up on here. So we got the double zero Landon Harris in the 16E of Sean Eggman as Mitch Keeter, your race leader, as Parmley and Van Zant start to battle out as Parmley has got some fender damage on that rear from earlier. Mitch Keeter to the back of the double zero of Landon Harris. Coming out of turn number four, lap car is now going to be an issue. Harris checks up, lets the leader around. Keeter on the low side right now, just pulling around, getting around lap traffic with no problems. I figured maybe it might slow him down, boy, folks. I was wrong. Mitch Keeter is hooked up and on a mission right now and looking to extend the points lead as Parmley and Van Zandt still duking it out around Harris. As Bittner and Atkinson are going to start battling it out, but here comes Keeter. Got more lap traffic in front of him as he gets around the 66 2 with more laps ticking down. 20 laps in the books, 10 laps remaining here for your cash money main event. Mitch Keeter coming in through three, coming out of turn number four as Noah Ames almost collects the 16 of Sean Eggman as Parmley pulls away from Van Zant, and your top three are pretty well spread out right now as we got three wide with lap traffic. You just, you got action all over the place right now. Keeter, your race leader. Single digit laps, Parmley, Van Zant, Atkinson up to the top four. Mike Bittner, your top five right now, but your top driver right now, getting ready to come to the back of the 26D of Jonathan Dean. As they come around through one and two, Dean gonna almost spin through turn. Mitch Keeter almost got collected in that one down the back stretch. Keeter is wheeling the 52 around right now. Got about, I'd say a quarter of a track lead over Jace Parmley in the number two spot. Keeter is just hooked up and ready to go. Van Zank though getting back to the bumper of the 82 of Parmley as Chandler Mooney having a little bit of problems entering turn number three. Mitch Keeter, still the Mitch Keeter show, showing you why he is your current points leader, trying to extend that lead down the back stretch. And a three, he comes more lap traffic, gonna be his issue. Jace Parmley just now entering three as Keeter's gonna pass the flag stand. And Keeter's got a wall of cars in front of him. Does he have enough time? Can he navigate this? Can Parmley run him down? Is there going to be enough laps left? As he's got three cars in front of him blocking his way, and he has Parmley closing a gap here. Keeter to the inside of Whitman down the back stretch. As he's starting to navigate it, as Parmley got around the 26D of Jonathan Dean. Mitch Keeter, your race leader, trying to get around the x 11 of Sean Duncan out of turn number two down the back chute. He's going to go. Parmley still a little further out than he would want to be. Keeter driving a beautiful race through traffic as they're coming down the front stretch. White flags out. One to go for the 52 of the Mitch Keeter. And the one for the final time out of turn number two. He's going to put Ames about six laps down on the back stretch. He's going to go into turn number three. Coming out of turn number four for the final time. Going to VP Racing Fuels victory lane, the 52 of Mitch Keeter. Jace Parmley, Jimmy Van Zant, Dustin Atkinson, and Mike Benton are going to round out your top five. You know, it was the, pretty much the Mitch Keeter show the whole race, but he showed a lot of talent working through lap traffic and a lot of good racing behind him and good runs there for 82, Jace Prumley. 
And the 67 of Jimmy Van Zant getting a podium spot there in the front stretch there. Race fans, get ready to make some noise for the 52 of Mitch Keeter, your current points leader as he climbs out of the car, your feature winner in VP Racing Fuels Victory Lane, Mitch Keeter! That's going to be back-to-back -back Tony Roper Memorial wins for Mitch Keeter. The 82 of Jace Parmley there in the runner-up spot. Good run for him. And there in the third and final podium spot is going to be the 67 of Jam and Jimmy Van Zandt. He's giving a wave. After that run, he's probably like, yeah, I'm good sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. The, I, was, I was pulling for Jimmy. He was throwing it in there hard in the one and two and into the corners, doing a great job. That 67 was working. He's giving a big old wave to the fans. There he he's is. got a smile on his face. He was having fun out there. <laughs> yes, he was. Congratulations to Mitch Keeter. Going to extend that points lead. Did a phenomenal job running through lap traffic. He just started picking them off, and then there was a wall of about four cars in front of him, and he just patiently waited his turn and found the right gaps. And you can tell, you <laughs> look at the camaraderie going on down there. Everyone had a good time. That was a good, fun race. Hey, uh, Midway, did y'all enjoy that one? Uh, yeah, see, I, I heard you. Y'all enjoyed it. Well, if you enjoy it so much, their racing schedule continues on the next weekend. Up, yep, up the road, 45 minutes away from here. So if you want to follow the Cash Money Late Model Series on Saturday night, go up to a place in Springfield. What's it called? Oh, Springfield Raceway. They'll be there uh, Saturday night, Springfield Raceway, where the Cash Money is going to be running out next. Some of the best. Uh, Local racing going on on Saturday nights right there up there in Springfield, as they call it, the home of the Cash Money Late Model Series. All right, well, we had one big feature already. We're getting ready to see the next big feature. As they're in the bike races, I saw somebody out there, and I told them, you got a bounty out for you, and we're going to see if that gets accomplished tonight or not. But, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the J2 Cars USRA Mod. Amen here tonight. And this is how they will roll out for tonight's feature on the pole for this one. We had a 15 of Caden Stacy had a good run in heat race action. On his outside will be 18 H of Justin Newman. Row number two, starting on the inside, will be the 49 of Randy Zimmer Zimmerman. On his outside, the F1 Mitchell Franklin. Row number three on the inside, be the 24 of Jerry Ellis. On his outside, be the 99T of Dalton Teal. Row number four, starting on the inside, is going to be the nine of Sam Petty. And on his outside, the man with the bounty, the 65 of Chris Jackson. Row number five on the inside, will be the 20 of Barry White. And on his outside, will be the two of Adam Kaltenbach. Row number six on the inside will be the six of Jay Flynn on his outside, the 55G of Lou Gideon. Well, row number seven on the inside will be the 42J of Donnie Jackson on his outside will be the 22X of Chad Donaldson. Row number eight on the inside will be the 21 of Jacob Bonner on his outside, the 22 of Tim Petty. 
Row number nine on the inside, be the 15 H of Jeremy Hazel on his outside, be the 214 of Quentin Taylor. And starting in row number 10 on the inside, the 71 C of Cody Crabtree on his outside, the 86 of Jeff Albright. 20 laps is your distance, and thanks to a silent sponsor, a $500 bounty is on Chris Jackson. He's starting from the ninth hole, the eighth hole, and tonight, Chris Jackson, as long as he doesn't have mechanical failure or doesn't get wrapped up in a wreck and isn't purposely taken out, we are going to see if the bounty gets accomplished as so far he has appeared three times here at Lebanon Midway Speedway this season and he has three feature wins. Uh, as we laid some moisture down before tonight's feature, but you know, Kitten, the other driver that's gotten the feature win this season is the F1 of Mitchell Franklin, who's starting on the outside of row number two. But that front row is pretty hot as well. The talented driver there in the 15, Caden Stacy, he's had a good run so far this evening here at the Monty Midway Speedway. Caden Stacy there on that front row with Justin Newman on his outside. 20 laps is your distance to J2 Cars. Sponsor of our USRA B Monge, J2 Cars located on Elm Street right here in Lebanon, Missouri. But tonight it is the Tony Roper Memorial. Chris Jackson, the man to beat this season, has a bounty on him. Oh, race fans, it's time for the J2 Cars USRA B Mod feature. Lights are off as they go in the turns number four. Green flag is in the air. Caden Stacy right there battling with the 18 of Newman and we got a car in the infield. And Joker Welling caution coming out. So speaking of J2 cars, Kitten. You're wearing that primetime Tony Jackson Jr. t-shirt. Him and his cousin Chris Jackson, partners in the J2 Cars, located on West Elm Street, Lebanon, Missouri. J2 Cars is a one-stop shop for all your racing needs. Like them on Facebook. Give them a call at 417-991-2556. And they have had a great start to the 2022 racing season with their race shop well bites are off we're getting ready to go back racing we'll see if we get a lap in back to the original restart no lap completed here we go Caden Stacy will lead them in the turn number four green flag is in the air Lots Down the of back stretch they go, the 18 of Justin Newman out front. The 15 of Caden Stacy in second, the 49 of Randy Zimmerman 
in that third hole, and Jackson right there, three wide battle, but the caution coming out. The two there are gonna have to take it off to the pits. Second caution of the night called on him, so he'll have to take it to the pits. That is two on two. Two H and Taylor there. Chris Jackson is taking it three wide there, but still early in this race. I think he's just going to want to get to the front within the first three laps the way he's starting off. So the 18, uh, Justin Newman is your leader of the 15 of Caden Stacey will have the choice between the bottom or the top. He will choose. He will choose. Gonna get them lined up, gonna get them stacked in, packed here. Double them up here. There we go, getting them all worked out here. So 24, Jerry Ellis go, supposed to go in front of the nine of Petty. He went, yeah. Race fans, lights are off. We got them lined up correctly. Yeah. 
Getting ready to go back to green flag race in action here at the mighty Midway Speedway. Newman, your race leader. Green flag back in the air. Here comes Newman out in front. Trench Cape, Stacy and Zimmerman side by side. The 65 though, Chris Jackson going to be right there in the mix next to Mitchell Franklin working his way through the field. Jackson up to the four spot to the inside of Stacy. It ain't going to take the 65 very long, but here he comes to the inside of Stacy. They're going to go side by side out of turn number four. Stacy holding on to that third spot. Chris Jackson getting that inside lane. Caden Stacy on his outside needs a pull from Jackson to close that lane up. As, oh, here we go. Jackson now already up there. Now second spot on the inside of Newman. The man with a bounty on his head says, hey, come and get it, fellas. Slide job there on Newman, and it's going to stick. Second spot there for Chris Jackson. He's going to try to reel in the 49 as Zimmerman coming in through three. Coming out of turn number four, the 65 of Chris Jackson. Gonna fall single file behind Zimmerman right now, maybe see, and now here comes the dive to the inside. Newman right there, Zimmerman's got a good line right now, as there's, he's got a, about a car length lead over Chris Jackson through three and four. Zimmerman running that middle groove around the mighty midway speedway. Jackson there on the outside. He's gonna go on the high side, do the crossover move there on the inside of Zimmerman. Down the back stretch they go side by side. Put a bounty on him, it doesn't matter. Caution, oh. turn number one. That might have saved Zimmerman right there. A couple more laps for him. That's the Clayton Holmes. Two of Adam Kaltenbach there. But the 49 of Randy Zimmerman was getting ready to see his lead taken away from 65 of Chris Jackson, but the caution saved him. So it's Zimmerman, Jackson, and Newman, your top three. The 20 of Perry White just pushed the tractor tire halfway through the infield. We're going to get them lined back up here. Chris Jackson from eighth to second with five laps in the books. Might want to start him a lap down. You might, you think that'll do it? <laughs> Chris Jackson, multi-time national USRE B Bond champion. 49er Randy Zimmerman is your leader. Newman in the 18 in third. Justin Newman, Mitchell Frank on our heat race winners earlier today. Or tonight. Or two weeks ago is Mitchell Franklin feature winner. Well, that's different. Jackson takes the high side on the restart here. Yeah, you know, 
I question that decision myself, but you know, I won't question anything that Chris Jackson does because <laughs> he probably has a plan for it. Green flag is in the air, and well, it looks like it paid out for it pretty good. And uh, Zimmerman's got a good run down the back stretch, but Jackson's still right there. Newman as well. Coming in through three, here comes Zimmerman. Jackson still on that back bumper. Jackson's gonna be right there. Whoa. Caden Stacy getting bailed out there. We're almost four wide down the front chute. Here comes Mitchell Franklin there, right there behind Jackson. In trouble for the 18 though of Newman. As Newman is up against the wall in turn number two. Tough break for Newman there. Will Zimmerman still your leader. Jackson in second, but the F1 and Mitchell Franklin in that third spot. Yeah, we appreciate everybody watching on showmedirt.tv. As 42J and Donnie Jackson being called to the shoot. As Joe, what the call? Don't forget, next Friday night, this Friday night coming up will be the Gary Woodall Memorial. Hopefully all of you guys will be back for that on Friday night. Newman there on the record, getting ready to exit the track. Tough way to end the night. Saw him running for him early. Good call, drivers.
Well, he picked the bottom this time, Kenton. We'll see what that turns out for him. As Franklin will be on his outside in row number two, but still out front in the, your leader to 49 there of Randy Zimmerman. As the green flag is back in the air. There goes Zimmerman in a one and two on the high shine. Franklin gonna be there too, but here it comes. Chris Jack's gonna silhouette Zimmerman down the max stretch. Zimmerman's gonna pull away and we got another caution on one and two. Single file restart. As we got the collection in turn one and two fixed. All right, we're gonna get a bunch up. Lights are gonna go off, gonna go back, green flag action. Here at Midway Speedway on a beautiful Sunday evening out here in the Ozarks. Chris Jackson's worked from eighth to second with the bounty on his head. His head or his car? Both. Oh. <laughs> Both. The 71 C pulling in the infield. The green flag is back in the air. Zimmerman on the high shine. Jackson gonna be down there on a low. Gonna silhouette it down the back stretch. Here they come into three and four. Zimmerman's got a good run, but Jackson doing what he does best right now. Just oh. right on a turn number four, side by side at the line. Oh man, almost too close to call. Jackson still right there. Zimmerman got yeah. a little too high. There goes Chris Jackson to the race lead into turn number three. Too high for Zimmerman and let it up with the lead go as Chris Jackson has now taken over the lead. Mitchell Franklin there in the F1 trying to get to the inside of Zimmerman as we got a caution on the speedway. Has got the 42J in the 24, Jerry Ellis, with some damage. Eight laps in the books. We'll do the single file restart. Lights are off, look to go back, green flag racing. Chris Jackson, your race leader. Zimmerman got a run for him. Mitchell Franklin as well, Caden Stacy, Sam Petty, your top five, as they come thundering into one and two. <laughs> Jackson out front, Zimmerman in the 49 and second. The F1 to Mitchell Franklin in the now third spot, looking to go on the inside of Zimmerman. Zimmerman closes the door. As it's Jackson, Zimmerman, and Mitchell, your top three, Caden Stacy in the 15. We got trouble in turn number two. Twenty of Barry White in the 86 of Jeff Albright. Having damage there on the front end of the 86 machine in the 20 of Barry White. Ball in the Joker welding caution. Both are going to be able to get under power tagged to the back of the field.
Lights are off, looking to go back green. Flag racing, Chris Jackson, your race. Leaders, Zimmerman, Franklin, Stacy Petty, still your top five. Down the front stretch, here comes Chris Jackson. Can anybody catch the 65? Zimmerman going high into one and two. Franklin getting a little high. Stacy gonna peek to the inside of him as we got one going around and turn one and two. Chris Jackson back to the green flag race in action. Got a great restart. Zimmerman there going to go on the high side again. Franklin and Caden Stacy going to come around there. Down the back stretch though. Chris Jackson going to open up a good lead. Caden Stacy looking at the inside of Mitchell Franklin coming out of turn number four. But right now, Chris Jackson wants to start checking out and getting some laps in the books here. As Franklin looking at the inside of Zimmerman as the battle for second now will be the one to look at. Right now, the 49er Rangers are men trying to hold on that second place spot, but the F1 and Mitchell Franklin right there behind Zimmerman. Caden Stacy having a good run it out 15. But it's all Chris Jackson out front. Coming down the front stretch, there goes the 65. Chris Jackson, the man with the bounty on his head, said, hey, you can try, but I'm gonna go for four in a row tonight down the back chute. He's opened up a commanding lead about a full stretch of the length coming out of turn number four. Chris Jackson's gonna lead another one. Started from eighth, worked his way to the front in a caution field main event tonight. Mitchell Franklin up to that second spot as Zimmerman now falls to third. As or fourth is Caden Stacy now taking the spot as Chris Jackson's gonna see the one to go. White flag is in the air one more time around for Chris Jackson. Four appearances this season. And he is getting ready to get his fourth win of the season. Four for four for the 65 of Chris Jackson. The F1 of Mitchell Franklin coming home second. 15 of Caden Stacy coming home third. Good run there for Caden Stacy. But it is all Chris Jackson. J2 Cars USRAB mod feature winner to 65 of Chris Jackson will be making his way to the Remax Next Generation Victory Lane. As Nathan Warson joining him in Victory Lane, not in person, but in style with the drone as Chris Jackson will park it, victory lane. As his son Carter is gonna join his dad in the next generation Remax victory lane. Race fans, let him hear you, your J2 cars. US are a BMOD feature winner, 65 of Chris Jackson. So the question is, does Chris Jackson get the bounty or does the bounty continue on? It's continue on, okay. <laughs> going to a thousand? Go, or going up by a hundred dollars? Or one hundred dollars? I believe we don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> a thousand dollar bounty next week. Yo, a thousand dollar bounty. 
Oh, wow. Now I say winner takes all. That's it. I'm going to go buy a car. <laughs> Well, I know where you can get one at J2 Cars. Call Tony and Chris. I don't know if Chris will be involved in that, but Tony would probably would be. Well, I could shoot him a message. Be like, hey, you want to do another interview? And uh, <laughs> you just want to sponsor me a car for a week? <laughs> you never know. Tony might find him a B mod and come out next week. <laughs> yeah, you never know. But hey. We got another feature coming out on the track, Shane. We do is the Macadoodles Power Eye Pure Stocks. Extra money on the line for them, 400 to win. As this is how they will roll out for tonight's feature. On the pole for this one, we... The 13th C of Clan Champney. On his outside, the 26 of Preston McDowell. Row number two. On the inside, be the five of Brian White. On his outside, be the one C of Scotty Carter. Row number three, starting on the inside, will be the 05G of Grayson McKinney. On his outside, the one SS of Stan Booth. Row number four on the inside, will be the 617 of Todd Bethel. On his outside, the 12 of Greg Dykstra. Row number five on the inside be the 88R Robin Showers on his outside be the 1K of Brandon Knutson. Row number six on the inside will be the 5X of Justin McDowell on his outside, the 14 of Jonathan Finley. Row number seven on the inside be the 25G of Michael Greenwood on his outside be the 53 of Kevin Yoink. Row number eight on the inside will be the 21 of Carson Groninger on his outside, the L34 of James Reedus. Row number nine will be your current track point leader to Six of Corey Henson on his outside be the 22R Kobe Rathbone. And starting shotgun in row number 10 will be the 17 of Austin Wilson. All right, race fans. This is going to be a barn burner right here. James Reed has worked his way through a B feature after flipping on the back stretch. And race fans, after the races, do not forget to go see your drivers in the pits. They want to see you, and you know you want to see them, so go check them out in the pits right after Keith gets off the flag stand. You'll be able to go out there. Here we go. Lights are off the final feature of the night. The McAdoodles Power Eye Pure Stocks. Green flag is in the air. Here they come down the front stretch. Cliff Champney going to lead them early. The 26 of Preston McDowell right there. Three wide out of turn number two with the five of Brian White. Getting up there early. Three wide going into turn number three and four. Brian White coming out as we got the six. Oh, big contact. The 617 of Todd Bethel going around there in the back of the blue ride. As cautions on the speedway between the middle of three and four with one lap in the books. One lap in the books and the Joker welding caution coming out. For the 617 of Tom Biffle. And a 26 or a 25 excuse me, of Michael Greenwood. So we did get one lap in. As Brian White's out front, your leader in the five. 26.
And Preston McDowell in that second spot in the 13 seed of Cliff Chapney in third. Going to get him lined back up here. race fans we got them stacked and packed here your power high pure stocks one lap in the books brian white there the five-year race leader lights are going to go off in turn number one looking for the green flag this next time by the fives going to lead them down the back stretch at a decent pace looking for the green flag to drop Keith, the flag man, ready to give him the go sign. And here we come out of turn number four. The field's going to come rumbling. Green flag is in the air. Brian White off a great start. There we got three wide battle for that third place spot. As the one C of Scotty Carter now jumps up that third spot. He's on the inside of 13 C of Cliff Chapman as they come down the front stretch. Brian White still your race leader. Scotty Carter up to the second spot. Grayson McKinney, we call him the silent stalker. He's on the high side right now on the outside of Booth going down the back stretch. He likes to get on the high side and go. Right, you still your race leader, Scotty Carter, right there in the second spot. As the field's gonna come rumbling through the back stretch. Everyone, oh goodness, trouble out of turn number two. The 17 of Austin Wilson going around. So Austin Wilson going around there, bringing out the caution. Looks like the 14 as well of Jonathan Finley. So far, it's been the Brian White show out front. Then the one C of Scotty Carter has moved up that runner up spot. 13 C of Cliff Chapman in that third spot. And then the 26, Preston McDowell sitting there in fourth. And the 05 G of Grayson McKinney right now in that fifth spot. Got to get Finley hooked up to the tow truck out there. Took the wrong end of that hit. So can you uh, proofread my Facebook post before I post it? Super Shane looking for a B modified for next week's Gary Woodall 1000 to, to win Bounty. Does that sound good? That, yeah, I, I'll, okay. I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, <laughs> all I can share that. I mean, $1,000 bounty now going to be going on Chris Jackson for next week. Are, are you free next week to take over my spot as I go drive? You might have to announce my name for that kind of money. <laughs> I mean, it's been a long time since I've been in a race car, and the last time I was in a race car was a sprint car, so... I think I could figure out a modified. You know, that might get the the uh, notice of Kyle Larson or somebody, you know, to come down the Midway Speedway. You know what, man? That guy can drive just about anything. And I'd love to see him come down here and run a local class with some, you know, some of our local guys and just to see what he would do. Ronnie will correct me, but I think the only NASCAR driver we've had here is Kenny Wallace. Yeah, he's been here a couple of times, but I think about that's about it. So it'd be neat to see Kyle Larson here. You got his number? I do not. No, um, <laughs> I've tried. I've, I've honestly tried. Um, I got bored one night, and I was doing my behind-the-wheel stuff, and I shot him a message 
I was like, hey, you want to do a Zoom interview? <laughs> Yeah. You probably got a secretary or somebody. Yeah, <laughs> or um, well, they actually never got back to me, oh. so we're just going to roll with that one and count it up as, hey, I tried. As we got the 14 there hooked up to the wrecker, we got the field doubled up. Hey, race fans, how many of you think that James Reed is there in the station wagon in the 34 can make his way to the front tonight after the accident he had earlier tonight? I see quite a few fans down there clapping. Oh, okay. A lot of front end damage there on the 14. Thomas said he'll send you Kyle's number a little later. I guess him and no, Kyle have. Yeah. Well, I mean, I wouldn't good doubt buddies. it. I think Kyle watches Show Me Dirt TV. I think he's a number one fan. You know, I've heard that rumor. I've heard that rumor. Well, we just got we just got news. I think the NASCAR race just finished, so he's probably in his mobile home watching. No, Show he's Me watching his, TV, and he's getting ready to watch the features. We're back to green flag racing action down into one and two. The field they go. Grayson McKinney going on the high side. The right. Grayson McKinney driving straight up to third, <laughs> real quick down the back stretch. He is making some moves early right there in the front of the pack there as it is tying all the way through the field here. Scotty Carter there on the inside there on P2 right now with White in the five steal. Your race leader, but Grayson McKinney dancing with the devil on the high side out of turn number four, slinging some mud off the fence line, almost bobbled it, but collects it back. White here, still your race leader. Here comes the one of Stan Booth right there by, with Grayson McKinney. Right now, though, it's been the Brian White show out of turn number four. He's going to lead another one. Scotty Carter trying to find a way around the five. Grayson McKinney right now, one of the only cars really running that higher line. Dancing with the devil in the moonlight tonight. Scotty Carter going to try going high. Out of turn number four, trying to get around White. White's got that low line cap fishing it up right now. Carter and McKinney now going high. But Grayson McKinney is getting it figured out. You know, he's running, testing that high side, but watch here in turns three and four. He'll continue to go high, and then it crosses down. And I think he's staying high. He might have found it. He, he might have found a little something there. Uh, Grayson McKinney always likes the high side no matter where he goes and where that 05 fits. So right now a little bit of lap traffic coming up for our leaders. Out of turn number four, White still your race leader. Scotty Carter still there. Grayson McKinney going to have to go to the low side to get around the lap traffic. There we go. Brian White can he hold off the one see of Scotty Carter. Here comes Grayson McKinney right there as we're going to get ready a three-car battle here for the lead. Right now, James Reedus has worked his way up to the seventh position. There in the station wagons were three wide out of turn number two, but Scotty Carter still trying to reel in the leader of Brian White, who has led from the drop of the hammer. As Grayson McKinney trying to get around Scotty Carter now as he's closed the gap on your two leaders. Oh, Grayson got to the back bumper of Scotty Carter, made a little bit of contact, but they still keep going. Grayson McKinney right there, still trying to reel him in. Scotty Carter, Brian White still running one and two. Brian White down the back stretch. Your race leader, Carter gonna try to Whoa. go a little bit high right now. I love these cars taking on the high side. They are, Scotty Carter and Grayson McKinney are keep pushing the cushion a little higher every lap they go. As Reedus now going on the high side, trying to work his way to the front, but our three top cars right now are in a dead heat, throw a blanket on them. White, still your race leader. Grayson McKinney, part with that high side a little bit. Scotty Carter loses a little bit in the corner and then gets it back down the straightaway. Oh, oh. Grayson McKinney, danced with the devil on the high side and lost. 
Too much there for the 05 Gia Grayson McKinney. The window net is down. That's a good sign. Window net is down. Joker welding caution coming out here for the 05G of Grayson McKinney. Always dancing with the devil on the high shine, and this time the devil's going to take that fiddle. Window net's down, race fans. He's climbing out of his car. Midway, let him hear you. As you can see, the damage to the front left there and the back end of the 05G. And you can see it right there on showmedirt.tv. He, right there, that's another top five driver in your national power eye points for your pure stocks. So he was out there assessing the damage, trying to see what he can do to get back racing next week. Tough break for the 05 of Grayson McKinney. Now, Shane, I got a question. They've made a lot of pace laps here getting trying to get Grayson off the track. And now I'm wondering, are, are these guys going to need to stop for fuel? Well, you know, talking with the uh, pit crew chiefs, you know, that's something they might think uh, about. But, you know, uh, it's going to be a, hey, a, a test game. I think we game, just had and, it. Yep. I think we did. We jinxed it. Oh, man, looking at the damage on the back of Grayson McKinney's car there in the 05. Oh, yeah, I think the 21's out of fuel. We got six laps to go. Now fuel's going to start playing a factor. <laughs> you know what's funny? We were just talking about this driver, too, the 21. Carson Groninger. Oh, he got her fired back up. He, he found enough fuel in there to get it fired he back up. He hit the, res the reserve. Yeah, he <laughs> flipped the reserve. <laughs> Caution still on the speedway. Grayson McKinney to the infield. Hey, you know what? If they all run out of gas, though, Joe Biden did that. <laughs> that right there is the greatest thing I have heard all night long. And no truer words were ever spoken. <laughs> As they're working to get doubled back up, we got six laps remaining for your Pure Stock main event tonight. Thanks for hanging out with us here on your Memorial Weekend. It is greatly appreciated to see all your smiling faces. Brian White's going to be your race leader. The track is cleared. Lights are off. We're looking to go back green flag racing. Six laps to go. Here we go, Brian White out front. Scotty Carter. And inside row number two and green flag is back in the air. Brian White gonna lead him down the front stretch. Scotty Carter as Booth. Booth just gonna drive to the middle of the field and keep it there. He made a big hard left turn in the pit road. As Brian White trying to hold on and go, whoa, come on, whoa! Oh! All Here right. comes McDowell, Carter the inside of White, bumping and banging the one C out of Springfield, Missouri. We, we ain't done here, folks. You put extra money on the line, added money. You're going to race hard for it. Scotty Carter's got that low line right now, but Brian White's driving a little high. Harder on the high side, coming in through one and two. Carter got a good run in through one and two. Down the back stretch, they're gonna go. We got one Brandon off the Knudsen. power. Knudsen's off the pace, did he run out of gas? That's the question. And caution thrown. You know what, it's going to get excited between the 1C, Scotty Carter, and the 5, Brian White. Four more laps to go. Is there a little bit of bumping going on there? I don't I don't call it a little bit of bumping. It, it was. You know, but here's the thing. If you 
You want to race like that, then you get open the door for the driver to race that like that as well. So that's how you want to be raced. That's how you want to be raced. It's like me. If I hit you, you, you can hit me. Right? Running's racing. <laughs> Up at the announcer's booth, we got elbows. If I elbow you, you elbow, you elbow me. Don't elbow the guy to the right of you. You'll, you'll lose that battle. Well, during all these stuff, though, look who's sitting there in that fourth spot. James Reed has his worked his way up to fourth. That's the story of the night right there. <laughs> Flipping in his heat race, working his way through the B. And you can't tell that that car was up in the air, straight vertical, crashing down on its side, seeing parts of the cars we should not see, and he's worked his way up to fourth. You want to talk about a wheelman right there. That 34 is one. Playing musical chairs. All right, here we go. Brian White has held his ground. Scotty Carter playing a little bit of dodgeball with him. Then we got to 26 of Preston McDowell. How many more laps to go? Four more laps to go. Let's finish it right here, fans. You have chose a good one to stay and watch. The Mac Doodles, Power Eye, Pure Stock. Green flag is back in the air. Brian White got out to a great restart there. Scotty Carter trying to play a little bit of catch up with the 34. Redis right there. McDowell going to bump Carter down the back stretch. They got it. Battle right now for third. Redis and McDowell going to start duking it out. Redis on the low side. Brian White going to lead another lap as we're going to have three laps to go. Redis is going to be up to third now. Here we go. It's White, Carter, and Redis, your top three. Out of turn number four, two more laps to go. Brian White, your race leader, got a nice little lead right now in the one seat of Scotty Carter. Reed is still trying to get a little bit of high side hustling in the 34. Down the back chute, though, Brian White starting to open up a couple car gaps. Scotty Carter's going to drive it in hard through three and four. Get to the back bumper of White as we got one lap to go. One more time around. Scotty Carter's going to throw the whole toolbox at him. Here we go. Scotty right there, but too much. He you know, slides up the track. He's gonna have to make something happen though in this race right here. He drives it hard, but I think, no, make contact. They just help White, and he gets the win. Woo wee. Scotty Carter second, James Reed is third. Now they're gonna round out the, oh, as White spins down the back stretch. Well. So the five of Brian White will make his way to the Remax Next Generation Victory Lane. Just remember, fans, after the races, you're more than welcome to walk on the track over to the pit, the pit area. We'll wait till all the cars are off the track. We'll open the gate for you guys to go there as the drivers have got pictures there. But the five of Brian White, ladies and gentlemen, your Mac Doodles Pe Power Eye Pure Stock feature winner. Congratulations to Brian White. Once again, once we get Brian White off the track, your fans are more than welcome to go over to the pit area, walk around the track. Head over to the pit area and visit with the drivers. We want to thank each and every one of you for being here. Hope you had a great night here. Hope you have a 